Good here. And we are recording and thank you for uh, participating. Uh, I will you know, ask that everybody, uh, since this, we have a lot of stuff on this agenda, so we ask everybody to be as uh, succinct as possible. And we also ask that everybody be as, uh, you know, you know, right, you know, to help each other out and to, uh, you know, just you know, cooperate and participate. And I thank you everyone. Uh, okay, this is our meeting for the uh, Landmarks and Land Use Committee of Community Board 2. Uh, Irene Janner is co-chair. Uh, Karen Johnson is secretary. And I'm Carlton Martin. Um, just when you have for, especially for Karen, for those presenters, or what, we do have names on this, but, you know, again, just, you know, clearly, uh, you know, give your names and your affiliation to your organizations so that Karen can uh, get the information. And if Karen need anything, any, any repeats, just you know, step right in. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll have, that's, if, now I just wanna ask if there's any objection on the uh, agenda. If there are no objections on the agenda, we'll adopt the agenda. Thank you, everyone. I have no objections on the agenda. So we'll pop right over to our Landmark Preservation Commission applications. And the first one is 267 Cumberland Street in the Fort Greene Historic District. The application yeah, is a full height rear uh, enlargement uh, on, let me go. stucco. And with a blended, you know, with, uh, to blend, you know, seamlessly into the existing neutral uh, colored stucco walls. Uh, and the base, the additional, I mean, additional will have, uh, you know, we'll have, yeah, okay, hold on. Yeah, so it's a second. We'll have horizontal remaining. You know, you know, horizontal remedial, uh, mimicking the rustication of the primary facade. All windows of the of the, of the proposed will have will have proportional to the to the window frames of the primary facade, uh, reinforcing the connections to the existing historical facade. And do we have the folks for 257 Cumberland Street ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, give us your name and organization and... Okay. I'll just pull up the presentation. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, board members. My name is Jenny Payson. Uh, I am from Jenny Payson Architecture, and I'm the architect for this project. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present our project at today's meeting. Uh, our project is located at 267 Cumberland Street. Uh, so that's between DeKalb Avenue and Lafayette Street. Here's a map of the historic district for reference with our site. Um, it's a three-story building with a basement four separate apartment units. There's one per floor. It was built in approximately 1863 in the French Second Empire style. Uh, so for phase one of the project, which is already complete, we actually, our office restored the primary facade of the building that was previously in disrepair. We were pointed all the brickwork, uh, restored the brownstone rustification on the basement level and replaced all of the windows with the appropriate uh, wood units. We also reintroduced the beautiful uh, stained glass transoms to the first floor um, level. So we completed, we completed that and got the landmarks approval um, in February of this year for that work. So this is a block plan that shows um, the composition of the architectural typologies um, to give some context to our building. Basically, the donut primarily consists of residential and mixed use row houses uh, shown here in beige and kind of a yellowy or light orange color uh, with a few larger buildings shown in the more deeper orange. 
We're also showing the existing rear yard additions um, on buildings that are similar to ours in blue. So there are 52 buildings uh, in the donut that are similar type to our building. 28 of them have rear yard additions and three are full height. Um, Which one is yours in the, uh, I'm look, we're, since we're looking at the donut, if, I don't know if you can. This, this one right here, can you see my cursor? Wait, uh, so it's got like a black, like a dashed outline. Um, okay. You see that? Ms. Oh. Could you zoom in a bit? We can't see your cursor. We can't see the cursor. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah. Hmm. If you can't, you know, if you can, you can. Let's, oh, that's the How about that? Okay. okay. Thank you. So that, oh. that's, you see that? Oh, okay. Uh, it's over by the corner. It's yeah. over by the corner. There's yeah, exactly it's like one yeah. over from the. Oh, okay, and there's a dark square by yellow. Yes, yeah, so there's like this one. That's like the the bigger building that's facing Lafayette, and then there's one other row house, mm -hmm. uh, okay. and then there's us. All right, I just wanted to get a sense as to. Sure. Let me just go back to presentation mode. I think it's a little easier to yeah. see. I understand. Um, great. So that's just to give you some uh, some reference. Um, so our, our current proposal that we're uh, presenting today uh, deals primarily with the rear facade of the building. And so here are some pictures of the existing conditions of that facade. Um, basically, you can see that uh, there's no real remains of any significant architectural elements on that facade, and it's in, in quite um, poor disrepair at this point. Uh, it consists of uh, double hung vinyl windows that are kind of punched in a, a painted brick um, wall. And a lot of it is crumbling and uh, cracked. So we're just hoping to, to bring some life to that back facade there. Okay, so this slide um, shows you the surrounding context in the rear of the building. Our neighbors to the south is 269 Cumberland, which is that stucco facade uh, seen here in the upper left-hand corner. Um, to the north, uh, we have a 32-inch alleyway that separates our building from 265 Cumberland, which is the low red brick building uh, that was built in around 2000. So these two neighboring buildings um, do exhibit quite a variety of massings and architectural language. And all three, all of the facades of the three buildings uh, basically extend different lengths into the rear yard, so they're not continuous um, in the current condition. Uh, so in the bottom row here, you could also see the, the a picture of the buildings uh, that are facing Carlton Street. So this is like right across from us, across from our rear yard. Uh, and again, you see kind of a variety of massings, uh, materials, architectural styles. Uh, there are multiple rear yard additions. You also see um, several buildings that have sort of cantilevered balconies at elevated floors. Um, this is just to show kind of that there is not one continuous architectural language um, inside the inside of the donut. Have you or your clients uh, contacted the neighbors uh, to let them know that it's going to be this additions and, and, and also possible construction that may affect their buildings? Very much so. We, we alerted both neighbors uh, to either side of us um, and also around um, a little bit further. But both neighbors to each side, we've actually spoken to on the phone. I think one of them might actually be on the meeting today. Um, and so we've had um, many discussions with them about, we sent them the proposal, we sent them the design. So they're definitely aware. And they have not expressed any um, concern over the architecture, at least to us. Um, most of the concern has to do with uh, vegetation and, and trees. Mm -hmm. uh, so, which which our uh, clients is you know also uh, basically it's uh, I'll just bring it up now since we're kind of looking at this picture on the upper left hand corner there's that beautiful river birch tree that's in our neighbor's uh, lot in 269 and uh, our our client also really loves that tree um, nobody wants to hurt it so we're going to do our best to um, to be as sensitive as possible and we're in conversation with that neighbor about that tree. Very good. Yeah. Okay, so here's um, a slide of just showing the existing roof conditions, the existing roofscape. We are proposing to, to have an occupiable roof deck. Um, we're not going to build a bulkhead. It's going to be a hydraulic skylight access hatch. Basically, um, instead of the existing skylight and existing hatch, we're just going to combine the two and have it be upper bowl. 
So here is a model of the existing buildings on the left and our proposed addition on the right. Uh, we're proposing to extend the basement floor the basement by about 15 and a half feet, feet and the first, second, and, and third floors second. by about 10 and I'm sorry, there's something. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, great. It's a little bit of echoing, but we can hear you. Yeah, okay. Uh, about so the upper floors um, over the basement level are going to be extended by ten and a half feet to the rear. Uh, so the basement and first floors are going to extend the full width of the building, whereas the second and third floors are going to actually be pushed uh, to the north, uh, which allows for balconies uh, facing south. Um, and also, the second floor is going to have a terrace that's going to open out onto the roof of the basement extension with a metal stair connecting the terrace to the garden. Uh, we are also proposing four new openings in the side facade of the existing building. Uh, three new windows on one door. So these are going to face into that little alleyway to the north of our building, and they're going to be looking at the brick uh, south facade of 265 Cumberland. That, that low building, the low brick building. Um, here you can also see uh, kind of the, the roof terrace that we're proposing with the railing that is set back from both the front and the rear of the building. And that's that's required by code. Uh, here's a proposed rendering of uh, our design. So, um, as you mentioned in the introduction, we are trying to take cues from the primary uh, primary historic building facade and put a more contemporary spin on it in the rear. Uh, the primary material will be stucco, which also references the materiality of 269 Cumberland to our south. And we're also we're proposing uh, black aluminum windows. Um, with these mullions to kind of a little bit more of an industrial look. Um, on the basement level, we're proposing for the stucco to have these kind of deep shadow line reveals that recalls the, the brownstone rustification on the front of the building. And the vertical window proportions on all of the levels are going to be mimicking the, those at the primary facade, but we did extend them horizontally so that they respond to the new building's proportions. Um, finally, we are proposing to have a transom over the first floor windows and door to echo that original stained glass transom that we see in the front. Okay, and so this, this slide uh, shows the only perspective at which our proposed project is visible from the street. Um, basically, when standing across from Cumberland Street, you can see a little key diagram there on the right. When standing across Cumberland Street, um, a small triangle of the upper side wall of our proposed addition will be visible through the parapet fence of 265 Cumberland. So from that perspective, you will, if, if you're looking over 265 Cumberland, you will also see the roof guardrail. Um, so in order to minimize the impact of these architectural changes to the historic block character, we are proposing to restucco the entire side wall of the building and blend our addition with that same material. And the roof rail, a proposed roof rail would be black iron to match the other predominant metalwork on the block. Um, the other thing to note is uh, on the lower left there, there's a photo looking down that 32 uh, inch alleyway. Uh, we are, those windows that we're proposing in there um, are going to have extremely visible, extremely minimal visibility because of how oblique that view is from the street. Uh, you basically won't be able to see them at all because they will actually be set back from the, the face of the, the uh, facade. So here's just a, a visibility diagram, again, showing that you won't see that fence if you're standing directly in front of the building. It's only if you're looking from the adjacent, over the adjacent building that that, that fence is visible. We also did a study um, looking at, uh, at the project from the other perspective. So this is looking from Carlton Street to a street gap near Lafayette. And um, so it's at an oblique angle and you will catch, if you stand across the street, you will catch just the upper corner there of the guardrail. But again, that's looking through uh, a narrow street gap over several buildings. So it is again at a very oblique angle. This slide is just showing a precedent on our block of a similar full height extension, the extension at 231 Cumberland. Um, it's just a very similar condition to our project. We, we're still working with landmarks to figure out if this is before or after designation, but um, at the very least, it does show that this kind of language does exist within the block. Uh, so it is um, a precedent that we wanted to show. 
so I'm just going to go through some drawings now. I can go through these a little bit faster because they're just kind of um, showing you what you already know. Um, this is the elevation of those three buildings. Um, these, these are not coplanar, as I mentioned before. 267, um, which is our building, is just is about eight foot ten inches short of kind of step back from 265, which is that lower building, and it is about nine foot four inches pushed forward from the from the rear wall of 269 currently, and in the proposed addition, uh, the ground floor uh, would be six foot eight past the facade of 265, and 24 foot ten. Um, Past so here's an existing side elevation, north elevation. Here are those windows that I mentioned before in the door. All of them fall within the envelope um, of 265, so none of them stick out past the building. Existing south elevation and proposed south elevation. Section. I don't know how many, uh, if you want me to go back to any of these, I'm happy to do it. I just figured they're not as. I think. So, yeah, I think uh, that's, that's basically it. Yeah. Got, thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Now we'll ask our, our board members and committee members. Do you have any questions or uh, comments? Mr. Gordon, this is Bill Flanoy. May I ask a question? Certainly, Bill. Okay. Uh, first, uh, rear yard. What's the uh, depth? Do you still have the 30 foot? We, we do, yes. Just one second. We do have the 30 foot. We have more than that. Let me tell you exactly. Yeah, I couldn't really tell uh, from the the actual di diagram that you showed us. We have 32 uh, feet. 32 feet? Okay. Yes. Uh, as far as the front, do you, you have the uh, top, uh, uh, whatever that is up there, the... Uh, how far away is that from the front of the building? The oh, the fence, the guardrail. The guardrail, yes. Give me a second. Could you bring your drawings back up, please? Yeah, but, oh, of course. Um, let me see if I can share again. Oh, um, oh, there we go. So to answer your question, it's eight. You froze. And you can if you can't, you know. I think she froze. Yeah, I got to freeze also. Ms. Payson, if you can hear my voice, um, please try cutting your video feed, which should free up some bandwidth for projection. Ms. Payson? I think that's a no. <laughs> did, we lose, did we lose her altogether? Yes, it appears so. There's a, a, okay, we lost a notification it. on her on her window. Um, are there, although she's not available, are there any other matters that committee members wish to address on this application? I have a question, but if she's not available, who am I asking it to? Yeah, I know. It's a, yeah, yeah. I think we should just put it aside until she comes back. And then when she comes back, we'll pick it back up. I think she might be coming back right now. Oh, give no, me a she's not. <laughs> she have a colleague on the line. Hello? Can, can you guys hear me? I can hear yes. you. Okay. Hi. Uh, Jack Rover here uh, from Jenny Payson Architecture. Um, okay. Okay. I guess ask Mr. Grover your question. Ms. I'd like to see the slide 24. Do you have access to the slides? Do I? Yes. Uh, I'll just a minute while I open the presentation. Uh, Jenny can hear and see everything. She just messaged me. Okay. Um, so I don't know why we can't hear and see her. She She should try going out and coming back in. Let's see. 
And do I have presentation uh, controls? How, Mr. How Grover, I... yes, you have presenter controls. Okay, Look for the word share. share. Yeah. Okay, it's coming up now. So number 24. 24 here? Yeah. Like, no, that's so no, that's not the one. Um can you do 23? Maybe 23? No, no, 22. It's the one that showed the back. Yes. Uh, can you go a little more? 20, 20, maybe it's 20. No, that's it's one that looks like a, um just keep going and I'll tell you when I got it. No. No, no, no. Maybe it's maybe it's forward. Maybe it's higher than 25. Dolly, was it a rendering or a photo? Yeah, it was a rendering, but it looked almost like it, it had. OK, OK, that's it. That's it. 25. This section where you're seeing the steps and the stairwell, is that an extension or was that there before? Not on the first floor, but on the third and fourth. You're um, seeing a rail and you're seeing um, like a door much further in, almost like a little terrace. Yes, those are those are balconies that we're proposing um, on the second and third floors. Um, oh, I don't recall her um, speaking about that. So so are you pushing the building out in addition to um, what you're making as the deck? Um, the balcony deck seemed to be on the second floor. That opens onto that balcony. I, I'm not sure I'm understanding the question. These balconies here on the, you see my cursor? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. These are the balconies you're talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those, the building is not coming out there at all, um, where those balconies are. Uh, that is, that the back of that balcony is the back of where the existing rear wall is. If that's what you're asking. Is so you're, cut, you're cutting into this space to get that stairwell. Is that what you're saying? Um, I'm not understanding how how you're getting that space. If I may, um, yes. Uh, Is she I, I'm, I'm yeah. No, I'm Daughtry on the committee. I'm an architect. So it's basically they're proposing an uh, sort of backwards L shape, and that whole L shape is an extension. But the area with the second floor um, terrace is actually the back of the existing building, correct? Okay. Yes, up okay. here on the yeah. All right, good, good, good. I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any other uh, questions or comments? Yeah. I asked, I, sorry. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, I just want to, my my second question I asked hasn't been answered because she froze. So I was just wondering on the rooftop. Uh, how far back is that fence from the front of the building? Uh, it's eight foot six. Eight foot six. Yep. Okay. And let me ask you a question. The rear is not uh, visible from anywhere in the back, I believe. Is that correct? The rear is uh, the rear it, extension. No, no. Okay. Uh, just the railing on the roof would be visible uh, per that sight line study. Okay. Daughtry, it's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mr. Flanoy, and I, it's related to that comment that, um, co excuse me, the comment that you just made regarding the visibility is really only catching that section of the fence. And I wondered if you considered, you've got the guardrail set back eight foot six from the front of the building. Did you consider pushing the guardrail in from the back of the original building so that it would not be visible from across the street? Um. You mean from this this visibility we're looking at here through the Carlton Street gap? It yeah, it appears that really the only visibility is of the guardrail, and I just wondered if you considered pushing the guardrail away from that edge just to get rid of the visibility altogether. Um, that is not something we discussed, but uh, we're surely open to it. Um, I mean, we were, I guess. Um, just kind of accepting the fact that the guardrail is going to be visible from the street, um, in particular from Cumberland uh, over that shorter building next to us. So um, it's, I guess, not something we had considered in the context of the other way around, but uh, we're surely open to it. I don't have any issue with it personally, 
but I do think if there was any concern about visibility, um, it, it's an easy adjustment to make. So I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Absolutely. I have a question. Oh, Mr. Gordon, oh. I have a question. This is Esther Blanche. Yes, Esther. Can you, can you bring back the picture of the, of the back that um, Ms. Ali was looking at? It was 25. Okay, it was yes. This, so this are you well digging right. down? This is going to be a door. The the area where it's like they going downstairs. In the back, you are you digging lower? Are you excavating that back? And then is is it a door for people to come in and out from back here? Um, yes, uh, we are excavating down and expanding the cellar uh, the same amount that we are expanding the garden level. Um, and so we have a staircase down to a door uh, to create a secondary uh, means of getting down to that cellar. And how far are you going down? Uh, I believe the cellar is nine feet below grade, but uh, you know this is in the back at the level of the basement, which is already a little bit below grade. So I think it's going down about seven feet. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? Can I ask, uh, are questions and comments open to neighbors at this point? Um, not at this time. Yeah, uh, yeah it basically, the yeah, for the, but not at the, yeah. Not at this level. Uh, it's basically for the board members and committee members and board staff. So I'm, I'm just asking because I'm the co-owner of 269 Cumberland, so I'm, I'm curious when we uh, will have the opportunity to comment on this proposal. Well, it's unfortunately, yeah, the way we do work the. Um, okay, well, I'll tell you what I will allow you normally we don't I will allow you a minute to give your comment so that we can hear it as a neighbor. I appreciate that. Um, I, so, yes, I'm the co owner of 269 Cumberland, along with my wife, who's here, Kenneth Hawkins, my name is Andros. My name is Andros Zins Brown, and uh, I would like to just say that I think this proposal is uh, very invasive <laughs> to us uh, and, our, and our neighbors. There's been no environmental study. The proposal would absolutely need to uh, cut a large portion of a tree there that we've done a lot of work to preserve. Uh, the digging down would definitely go into the roots of the bushes that we have in our garden. It would eclipse a large part of our garden. We just did a renovation ourselves. We went through a lot of pains not to cause any uh, interference with our neighbors. Uh, and this, there's, this would be very uh, highly interfering. We find. I okay. Know, well, Dennis, if... Okay. Um, now the presenter has said that they, since you're at 269, which is, I assume is next door, uh, yes. that the, that the. They had spoken to you as one of the uh, neighbors, you know, in Ken advance. Kenneth, would you like to comment on that? Sure. Hello, I'm Kenneth. Um, thanks for letting me speak. Um, I received a letter under my door just a couple days ago and spoke briefly with Jenny and also actually met uh, Jack on Monday. Um, and that that's really my only contact with them that's when i learned about the um extent of the project and proposal was just this past monday okay thank you all right uh now we we'll get back to our committee members are there any other comments or questions from our board members or committee members yes i just have one more one more observation Go ahead, which, Dorothy. sorry which is that um this extension I noted does come out almost 25 feet past the neighbor at, at 269. And that is a significant um, build out that adjacent to their property. It's not as significant on the other side, but I did note that. Okay. Um, thank you, Daughtry. Um, Mr. Gordon, John Dew. Yes, Mr. Dew. Yeah. Um, I'd like to ask the applicant, were they bringing this proposition forward that this is an historic neighborhood that generally tends to like to respect 
the boundaries that the neighborhood was built in. That's sort of like what historical means. And that building something that is this out of style and, and size and character is an abridgment to the uh, neighborhood and its historical past. I'd like the applicant to talk to that. What made them come up with this particular scheme that was so different than everything else? Um, is Jenny, I think Jenny is here. Um, I'd like to have her answer that if, if possible. Um, Jenny, are you there to answer? Jenny? If not, uh, can you, uh, <laughs> go on, yeah. Are you able to? Yeah. Are you, are you able to uh, address that question, or are you I, un, unable? Yes, I can. I can try to touch on that a little bit. Um, and I guess I'll show. Oh, did you guys just lose my screen? Uh, yes. Just seeing you. Okay. Well, just no. I think it's more of a uh, just tell us what. In yeah. This question. Just to generally, he just wants to know how you develop the. Uh, your concept more than actually. Uh... Yeah, so the, the concept was really developed uh, by looking at kind of what was around uh, with a lot of the existing rear yard additions. Um, and so there's quite a bit of variety uh, and our facade itself uh, is distinct from its neighbors. Um, so we were kind of hoping uh, with our rear yard addition to do something that was different from yard additions um, that, that we see along the block, uh, which which are do tend a lot on the more modern side. Um, so, we, so we were hoping that, you know, that while the design is definitely modern um, and doesn't necessarily recall uh, quite the historic features, we were hoping that, you know, the, the scale of the windows um, and bringing in some of those transoms and, and the rustication really kind of was a, a remix of some of the, the elements you find on the, the historic facades, but in a, in a more modern context. Which matches the uh, more modern uh, donut well, I, that we see. I, I would, I would just add to that um, that this is a landmark district, and the goal of creating a landmark district is to create is to maintain the landmark character of the district, and that clearly represents a great derivation from everything else in the rear yard, from what I could determine. You don't have pictures of the other rear yards that I saw in tonight's presentation, so I can't compare what you've done to what you're saying other folks have done. Um, but your next door neighbor clearly um, was not aware to the extent of, of, of what you are proposing here. I just felt uh, compelled to make that point. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gordon, this is Esther Flan. Yes, sir. The habit of throwing a letter under under someone's door two days before the land use committee is not notifying your tenants properly. This is outrageous. And I'm making a motion to disapprove. You move to disapprove. Do we have a second? May, may I speak to that just a little bit? Um, uh, at this point, we're making the motions, so it's, uh, I think at this point, we're, I just want to do, do, I have Esther Blunt's motion, and we have a second. The motion remains on the floor. You can continue to uh, do other business after I second it, which I'm going to do, but uh, I believe there's some other comments. Uh, I was led to believe by the board office that we have received other comments from the community. That have to be heard. Uh, Carlton. Yes. Uh, I have a question. Who is this? Which? Uh, uh, oh, Ernest? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can. Yeah. I always can barely hear you, but go ahead, Ernest. You can barely hear me. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? No? Your audio yeah, you is very poor, Ernest. Can you get closer to the microphone? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? You can no, hear you. Put it in your mouth, Ernest. We can hear you, but all right, just do the best you can, or okay, the best I can. Uh, regarding the excavation down to the cellar, uh, how how um, 
how tall are your fellow uh, feeling? Are you trying to uh, create some height uh, down on your fellow? No good? Is that a question directed at me? Either, either yeah. presenter, any presenter. Yeah. Okay, I, yeah, I'm not sure if Jenny's back yet. Um, the this, uh, height of the cellar currently, we have two elevations. Um, there's part of the cellar is excavated uh, with a ceiling height of seven foot six. And the other part of it is a ceiling height of six feet. So our proposal is to excavate uh, the back half of the cellar, which is of a higher elevation down to the level of uh, the higher ceiling. Uh, so it all in the cellar be the seven foot six. What is this? Uh... Is it being used as the bedroom, living room, or what type of activity is, is it being uh, used, used for? Uh, storage. Um, it's the owner's, uh, it's it's part of the owner's uh, personal duplex, so it's just going to be storage and laundry. Um, and just wants more head clearance. Okay. All right, so we have a motion to disapprove. Newly seconded. Are there any other comments from board members or committee members on the motion? Yes, Daughtry. I just want to say that I think um, the materiality and the presentation of the extension is great. I think my issue is the depth of it and its effects on the uh, on the donut as well as the immediate neighbors. Understood. Mr. Carlton, Mr. Gordon. Yeah. Yes, but yes, uh, well, yes, yeah, yeah, uh, my feeling is also very similar to Daltrey's. Um presentation is fine, but I believe that uh, since it's also a rear extension, it's not actually front show uh, front facing. Uh, I don't think that's actually something that should be concerned about as far as uh, historic district, but I do have an issue with the depth of the property. Okay, the depth of the property is impacting their neighbor. And because of that, I think this might be an issue uh, that needs to be addressed. Okay, but as far as the design uh, is concerned, I'm okay with that. It's the depth that I'm concerned with. Understood, Bill. Thank you. Are there any other further comments from committee members or board members? If not, we'll, we have a motion to disapprove. A yes will be in favor. I have a comment, Mr. Carlton. Yes, yes, Mr. I think the applicant has told us that there's still 32 feet rear yard. So the build out is within the FAR of the project. It's not um, encroaching and violating any rules. Um, it's a lovely project. I, I like very much what I see in the back, but I think they should have talked to the neighbors. Um, I'm kind of torn between this because I think they are doing what is as of right. Um, Mr. Glover, you want to say something? Yeah, I think I just want to state for the record um, that, you know, this process is very new to us. Um, we were, you know, just told by landmarks recently about the whole process. Uh, we weren't sure how to notify neighbors. Uh, and I did slip the, the flyers under our neighbors doors uh, last week. Uh, uh, more than a week in advance of the meeting. So it was not two days ago. Uh, I met with uh, the neighbor two days ago, but but we did notify them a week ago. I know that's still not uh, necessarily uh, sufficient, but um, it is a little bit confusing on our end how we're supposed to uh, manage getting in contact with neighbors. We understand. Just for the record, yeah. just for the record, I would like to. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Judy, yeah. Yes. Uh huh. I think it's a given in row house neighborhoods and uh, row house living that when you are going to make a major change in one of the row houses, it's it's courteous and kind of common sense, even though it's your property or your client's property, to introduce oneself to the neighbors and explain and and understand from the neighbors' point of view how it's going to uh, change or affect their experience in their house. Doesn't mean you can't, as a right, go ahead and do it anyway. But it's always a very good idea and a courteous thing and a way to get along in row house neighborhoods is to have these conversations well in advance, not just by um, notice a week before. Well said, Judy. 
Absolutely. Okay. All right. Are there any further comments or questions? We have the motion, which is duly seconded. If not, no. I see, I see. I can actually see most of the names. Now I'm going to read them off in the order that my screen, as opposed to anybody on the screen, has. So it's uh, I'm not going by alphabetical or anything else. I will actually Judy's on my first uh, uh, per, you know, the first one again. A yes for this is to approve the motion to disapprove. Judy, I approve the motion. I approve the motion. Okay, that's one. Uh, Bill. Bill Flournoy? Oh. I guess we lost them. Going to abstain. Abstain? Mm hmm Okay, uh, John Du? I approve the motion. Okay. Uh, next one on is Brian. Brian Holland? Abstain. Uh, Daughtry? Daughtry? I approve the motion. Uh, next one I see, this is Ernest. I support the motion. Thank you. Uh, Esther? I support, I, I agree. It's your motion. Support. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I saw Miss Lee, oh, actually, well, okay. Miss Lee? Abstain. Abstain. Karen? Yes, approve. Okay. 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 Uh, next one, I see. Uh, I know Irene's in there somewhere. Irene? Hi, Irene. Are you not there? I'm pretty sure I saw Irene come, pop up. No? Okay, I, uh, I guess we lose Irene. <laughs> and are there any other board members or committee members that I may have missed? Yourself? Mr. Washington is on the call. Oh, hi. Okay. Hello. Uh, yes, I approve. You approve. Okay. And Can you hear me yeah. now? It's Irene. Oh, Irene. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you, Irene. Yeah. Oh, I abstain. I think we've treated this one differently than we have done in the past on these similar things. Okay. And okay, I will vote go along with the motion so that we have five, six, seven, eight in favor of the motion. No, I guess opposition and four in abstentions. So the motion passes. The motion again was to uh, disapprove of the applicant of the application. Mr. Gordon, can I ask you a question? Yes. Anyway, do we have to follow the agenda? Can we move Clifton Place up? Um, I'm just asking because there's a lot of neighborhood concern about that project. Well, we've we deliberately held that one because we want to give people uh, the time. So I don't want to hold people, you know, the, the shorter ones, uh, hopefully shorter ones. We'll try to get through the other ones as quick as we can. So and then we'll have maximum time for Clifton Place. I really, I'm well aware of the uh, interest in Clifton Place. So we're going to try to get through the other ones as quick as possible. And in fact, the next one. May I ask a question, Mr. Gordon, before moving on? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I just want to clarify that the motion to disapprove mm -hmm. is why? I, I need a succinct statement on the motion. Uh, the motion is to disapprove based upon the rear, the, the work that would be involved with the rear and the, again, Too dense. And the notification the depth of, of the Carlton, neighbors. The depth, the depth, the 25 foot depth. Okay, because of the so it's notification to the neighbors, that's outreach, the right. masking, right. and 
Okay, and it's impact. Thank you. Okay. And Carol, and Carol, I think it's some of us. Yes, are yes, also Judy. Concerned. Some of us are concerned about the depth. Let Judy. Uh, I'll give this one to Judy first. Go ahead, Judy. The depth, the depth of the addition, the twenty-five foot depth of the addition is a concern. Thank you. As well as the materiality. I heard that the materiality was great. See, I'm asking for clarification. That's what Doctor said. I'm giving you my opinion. I am not speaking for anybody else. Other people said the materiality was great. Well, I the motion the has already. Okay. The motion has already been made. I'm just clarifying the content of the motion. Great. I'm trying okay. to ask you Let's move on. Okay, yes, please. So we do want to get towards uh, the Clifton place, but I want to get these others as soon as we can. Uh, okay, the next one is 208 Dean Street in the Bourne Hill Historic District. And the application is to construct a full width uh, rear guard extension uh, at, the, at, the, at the yard, at the, uh, for the, uh, at the parlor, and the uh and 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 the ground and the garden floor mm -hmm. with the smaller right here the smaller extension on the second floor uh facade will be brick uh for full width extension uh what do i have here yeah and this yeah okay yes for, okay go ahead um uh, for 208 Dean Street. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, we're talking about extensions and rear. So I guess part of it is have you notified your neighboring buildings on this one? Yes, absolutely. In fact, one of them is a contractor who is bidding on the job. Okay. Uh, the neighbors, uh, these are not new owners. They've been in the neighborhood for uh, I think 16 years now and um, are, are very active in the in their neighborhood. So they're- okay. Give us your name and your uh, sure. affiliation. Sure. My name is Justin Weiner. I am the senior associate at BW Architects. Uh, we're a 25-year-old firm here operating out of Soho in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And I have two colleagues on the call with me as well, uh, Aaron Smith and Jose Abreu, um, who, uh, who are presenting along. Should I open up my first document? Is that okay? Please start. Okay. Let me know if you could. Oops, sorry. Please let me know if you can see my screen okay. And I'll yeah. zoom in as we did on the test at the beginning. Uh, this is in the original Borum Hill Historic District. Uh, this is our project. It's worth noting in, in the parlance, in the donut, there are several additions except the Borum Hill Historic District, as you likely know, recently expanded. So a lot of the additions that are on the south side of our donut um, they uh, they don't bear any historic uh, uh, reverence at all. Uh, let me just show you here. This is the front of our building. Uh, this was renovated when the owners did an SRO conversion uh, about 13 years ago with another firm. Uh, we are not proposing any changes to the front of the project uh, in this district. Uh, at the rear of the project, this is what the current conditions look like. It's a stucco exterior right now. Uh, the neighboring buildings are a mix of brick and stucco. The rear windows were replaced during the renovation back in 2006. The, and grayish, the grayish building is yours. That's correct. Well, it's not mine. It's my client's building. Yes, yes. I mean, yes, yes. I wish it was mine, but it's not. It's, uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, some of the views out. So if you look back onto, so this is backing up onto Bergen Street on the rear side. And yeah. um, you can actually see, so these are, these are some of the additions that exist today uh, that don't bear resemblance to what we are proposing. There is a mix of um, some vinyl siding. Uh, there are some further down the block on Bergen. So this is a, this is a little grainy. There are very uh, large fenestrations uh, and a lot of stucco work. Uh, we are not proposing anything at this scale. Um, so this is this is the context. Of what's in the back? Apologies. And what we are proposing is a, is a fairly modest addition at the rear. We actually have, as of right, the ability to go back 14 foot six, uh, but we don't 
that much of an increase in square footage. Uh, so we are only proposing a 12 foot addition at the rear. Um, and we are looking to stay as contextual as possible. Um, so this is on the left, this is the existing footprint. There is an existing uh, deck at the back that we are looking at uh, once the, uh, the 12 foot addition is built. And this is, I also, ha I have a render view of this as well. So this is the existing view. All of the, um, uh, the fire escape is, is for the adjacent building. Uh, and there's no change to building envelope at the top at all. We're not, we're not expanding up there. So this is the proposed design. Of and if it bears any relevance at all, part of what we were looking to achieve, I, I know that we're not really talking about the interiors, but there is a view from the interior. I did want to show everybody that, um, excuse me one second, that looks to aim that we're looking to stay contextual within the Borum Hill vernacular for their townhouses. So even the subdivisions and what we're proposing is meant to pick up on the historic character of the Borum Hill townhouses. Their, their initial SRO conversion, if memory serves, was on the Borum Hill house tour back in 2007, I believe, um, as, a, as a very modest renovation. Um, and we're looking to not to uh, overly modernize it, but try to keep it in the, in the look and feel of, of the neighborhood. Uh, our sight lines, this is showing the sight line is, is somewhat irrelevant from the uh, from the front because we're not changing anything at the front of the building. And then at the rear, uh, you can see due to the change of grade that the back of the house, um, it actually steps down as, as the terrain goes towards the Gowanus. Um, so this is the scale of the proposal. And then the rear addition being brick, we do have a just completed rendering of the rear. Let me just pull that up. Um, and I should just mention that this was, well, this is fine. I'll just pull this one up here. And this was a, a, a quick rendering we were producing for in advance of this meeting. We we have already had a had a uh, a Zoom meeting with the folks at Landmark. The deputy commission uh, the deputy commissioner was kind enough to um, give us some time on Monday of this week. And um, we have and she said that from a Landmark's perspective, they thought it was handsome and contextual. We have already incorporated the only feedback which they gave, which was to internalize our rain gutters uh, so that they weren't on the exterior of the facade. They asked we bring them inside, so we've already picked that up. But they said otherwise they would have no objections uh, to the design of what we proposed um, to the back, especially that it's only 12 feet coming back instead of the 14 foot six. Okay. We also left out, the, we left out the trees in this rendering too, just so not to think that we were trying to, we were trying to hide anything. This is this is what it looks like. Okay. Very good. Uh, are there any questions or comments from board members and committee members? Um, yeah. Sure. Can I see uh, a top view, please. Sure. Is this good? Uh, back it out a little bit, please. How's that? Okay. So the construction, I'm looking at the outline. Is that correct? The red uh, outline? Yes, sir. Yep, that's correct. Okay. So you're already going out the existing, uh, that's the steel deck. Is that correct? The that's deck already projects. established. That's correct. Yes. Well, the deck, let me just slide over for one second. The deck, if this is the existing condition, so that deck is currently attached to the, the eight foot deck is currently attached to the back of the existing building. So it's the How intent. How is that deck? Uh, I think it's 11 feet, Jose. I don't know if he's on the call here with me. Um, it is, I can, I can touch it and I'm not a tall guy. So it's that tall. Okay. And you're going to race it to the second floor. Is that correct? No, that's it. That's incorrect. The, um, we're, we're pushing that out in plan. So the deck, the deck actually is at. Oh, I'm the sorry, garden I'm sorry the extension. I'm sorry. The extension is going to be raised to the 2nd floor. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You can go back to plan if that's helpful. So inside of the donut, uh. What is the maximum length of any other addition in the donut? 
Um, I, it's a good question. I don't know the answer. The ones that are down here, this was taken off of Zola when we when we pulled some of this addition off. I would assume that they were okay. going to the maximum of the rear yard setback, which which we're not proposing. Could you put your cursor over your build? I guess you are sure. your building again. Just to... Sorry, <laughs> it's this one here at 218th Street, if you can see that. Oh, oh, I see the one with the, okay. And the little red is the your proposed extension. That's correct. At two stories. Okay. So this is that stucco three story addition that's on Bergen Street. Mm -hmm. And see. then these ones, the ones that are further down in the donut, uh, there seems to be a lot more development to the east side of the donut, and those go three and four stories tall. Okay. But that was only recently landmarked. I think that was landmarked last year, actually. That that side just to go. Up. Yeah, I know there was a, a revision of the uh, historic district, so I'm somewhat I'm so, aware of that. So if that's helpful, that's that's our lot that's there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gordon, I have a question. Yes, Daughtry, go ahead. Um, would you mind going back to the donut site plan, please? Sure. And I'm wondering if you can tell me. Um, so on the north side of the street, it looks like your extension is slightly deeper than a typical two-story and single three-story additions on the north side. Can you confirm that and tell me how much deeper it might be? Um, I don't have the information on this call. Aaron, do you happen to have that information, would you, if you're still on this call, Aaron Smith? I don't have that, I don't have that handy. Okay, so um, I just, to finish why I'm asking is that sure. <laughs> there, um, we'll hear a lot later about uh, preservation of multiple houses at a certain scale. And there's this uh, northwestern section uh, facing Dean Street that has this nice clean line, which is something that you don't see very often. Um, and so I'm observing that. I'm not really saying anything about it except to say that I'm noting it. And that sort of led me to ask about the depth of it and its relationship to the depth to the east. I see. Okay. I'm familiar with other neighborhoods where they had these old tea porches on Henry Street. I worked on a project some time ago, and there was historic preservation aspects. And and I did work with LPC on that. Um, but I just let me just go back to the existing condition photo here. It really isn't much preserved in in really any of this particular section of the rear yards um, uh, of something to maintain. Yeah. Thank you. Can I say something, Mr. Gordon? Yes, Ms. Ellie. Um, I think your lot looks go can you go back to that donut shot? Sure. It looks like your um your lot seem to be a little deeper than the others on that same um strip. Sorry, one second, I'm looking for my donut. It could be like a hundred and eight feet rather than the hundred. The same one that you had up with that uh, I'm sorry. tree was talking about. I'm on the wrong page. There we go. So that red yeah, line, yeah. so I have just, so I, I apologize if that's unclear. That red rectangle is not the lot line. The lot line is oh. dotted inside of it. So apologies if that's unclear. I was just merely so trying that, to highlight so it. So then you are the same lot, lot size as the neighbors. That's correct, yes. Okay. Sorry if that was unclear. Are there any other questions or comments? I have one more question for us. Audrey. <clears throat> is if, if I heard correctly, um, LPC has basically green lighted this with the minor change of interior versus exterior meters. So why are we why are we uh, why are we talking about this? <laughs> I, so make I a motion. I make a motion to approve the application. I'll second it. Okay. That's fine. Are there any uh, questions on the motion? Okay. Uh, can you bring down your uh, jumps and bring down your? <coughs> okay, so I can see. Yeah, okay, thank you. There we go. Sure. Okay, this way. Again, I'm going to read them off as I see them on my screen. Okay, we have a motion to approve, and it's been duly seconded. I see Miss Ali first. Miss Ali. Yes, I made the motion. I seconded the motion. Okay, and Miss Cars Daughtry. I approve my motion. Okay, very good. <laughs> All right, that helps. Uh, next one is Brian. 
Yes, I approve. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, great. All right. Uh, next one I have is Ernest. Uh, yes, I support the motion. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Du, next. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Karen? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, next one I have is still going through Bill. I approve. Approve, okay. Uh, who is CB2 member? That might be Carol Ann. So it... Oh, Mr. Gordon, right. that's, uh, that's uh, it's Mr. Washington. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're a CB2 member, yes. Are you yes. Okay. All right. I think Irene, are you, we still have you, Irene, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I'll join in. Yes. So it's 10 0. How about Esther? You're there. Esther. Oh, sorry, Esther. Esther. Yes. <laughs> Again, I'm yes. Yeah. It's okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So 11. All right. Did I miss anybody? Miss Stanton. Oh, Judy. Yeah. yeah. Paul. Yes, Judy. Judy. We have 12. 12? Oh, yes, Judy. Okay, we have 12.00. Mr. Gordon, would you like for us to call, for us to do a roll call the next time so it's easier for uh, you? If you can do it, that's fine with me. I'm just trying to sure. read it off the screen. If you have everybody in front of you, that'll be fine also. Okay, so <laughs> one of you and might well let you Might well let your secretary do that. Well, Karen usually doesn't have <laughs> the extras. I can do that. Yeah. Ms. Church, Ms. Church has the role and, and a tally sheet. Okay. So, whoever, all right. Whoever wants to do the next one is more than welcome. <laughs> right. Okay. So, we have two or eight done. All right. And yeah, the next one is 142 Willow Street. Yes. Yeah. Never. You did never. You did not hear my vote. Uh, I think we were told. All right. Well, oh, all right. Well, what is your vote? You didn't, uh, you didn't call on me, and I just have a quick. Yeah, no, no. We yeah, he I, did. I missed. I missed the introduction, which was to ask you if we are not um, reviewing the rear yard edition. Why was this brought to the community board? If we're not, if what? Okay, what is it? The vote. Talk about that later. We have to finish the vote. We got a motion on the floor. All right. I'll vote yes on the motion. Okay, thank you. So we have 12-0-0 in, in favor. And plus we're concerned again with the, uh, one of the things that we're concerned about, I'll just state is that with the effects of um, the construction on neighboring buildings. So, I think this is something that we should, you know, we should do, even if it, thought you said it was already approved by the LPC. Not officially. That was advisory. That's oh, advisory. Yes. Yeah, it was not officially approved. Oh, no. okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, well, let's get in the well. In fact, we're going to get to yours. Yeah. Accurate, Coming yeah. towards yours right now. One forty two Willow Street in Brooklyn Heights. The application is for a Greek revival style uh, raw, uh, raw house. The existing uh, painted prick will be cleaned and repaired. The front area way will be uh, will be lowered 12 inches uh, with with loose uh, with the basement the basement floor elevated. Uh, the stucco facade at the second floor uh, rear extension will be cleaned and patched. Two existing window uh, are, you know, two existing windows and are, are existing and existing door at the second floor rear uh, facade will be moved. Uh, two windows, the two windows will be installed in the uh, modified openings. The roof membrane will be replaced and the existing uh, chip, you know, you know, existing chimney will be removed. The roof scuttle uh, will be, and skylight will be relocated. 
a new uh, a, a new uh, what, what do we have also we have here or oh, yeah at the aluminum clerestory will be in will be enclosed it will be uh, all right with a with a rear fa uh, facade facing the painted wood uh, on the left side on the left side and we also have a uh, what else do we have on this one oh yes so there will also be work on the yes yeah, so it'll be relocating uh, the mechanicals will be relocated re and replaced. Okay, so 142 Willow Street. Yes. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Nicole Halsey and I'm with CWB Architects. Uh, if it's all right with you, I'd like to share my screen to introduce you to the project. Please. Okay. Okay, can you all see my screen? I, I realize this first page is rather small, so I'm going to zoom in. The rest of the presentation should be a little more easy on the eyes. Okay. Okay. The best so, you can. Sorry? Yeah, just do the best you can give us. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this property is 142 Willow Street. It's in the Brooklyn Heights Historic District. Uh, the property is located between Clark Street and Pierpont. Uh, at the lower portion of my screen here are previous tax photos of the property. You can see here, there's our 1940s photograph, this is the 1980s tax photo, and this is the front facade today. It has a you know, creamy vanilla brick color. Um, and then this image here on the left is a photograph of the existing rear facade, no, rear facade of the building. Um, and just to reiterate, some of the work we're about to discuss are restoration and repairs to the front facade, um, a extension of the existing two-story extension on the rear, and um, relocation of mechanical equipment on the roof, as well as the um, the construction of a clerestory enclosure to create uh, a skylight window for one of the upper floor bedrooms. Uh, so, on this page here, we're looking at our block diagram. The property, it's located right here. The diagram's rotated so north is to the right side of the page. Um, but the diagram is, is just meant to demonstrate the um, varying heights of building construction on the block. And as we see here, this property is quite dwarfed by some of the adjacent buildings. If possible, can you put your uh, cursor over your? Yeah, of course. Uh, so this is the property here, 142 Willow Street. Um, and this uh, kind of greenish colored tone represents the existing two story extension. Oh. And the, the tone that's right next to the star, this represents the enlargement of the extension, which is included in our proposal. Um, so I'll keep moving right along. This is a photo montage looking at the existing buildings. Right here is 142 Willow Street. It's that creamy white brick color. And this building is one of a series of rows with a 140, 138, 136 that all feature a, a simplified Greek revival style architecture. <clears throat> Uh, what we'll talk about in the next few slides is our interest in repainting the front brick. Instead of being this creamy tone, the owners would like to understand if it's possible to paint this brick uh, a soft gray tone. And uh, we're also proposing that the entryway, which is a we understand to be a non-original uh, federal <clears throat> colonial revival entry, we, if possible, the owners would like to restore this to be more in keeping with a Greek revival style entry. Um, so these photos are just taking a closer look at some of those existing conditions. Um, again, it's the brick, the brick paint color, which the owners are interested in changing if possible. And this, we'll, we'll take a closer look at this um, existing 
federal style entryway in the next few slides. Uh, another component component to the proposal for improvements to the front is to lower this existing area way. Um, what we tried to dash in here, and I apologize if it's difficult to see on your screen, we tried to identify the existing uh, front paved area, which is at grade with sidewalk, and the owners wish to lower that by approximately 16 inches so that the elevation of grade here would be at the same elevation as the garden level floor at the interior. Uh, so does this affect your neighboring buildings? Or the, no. The no, this wouldn't. And the, the, air, the proposed area of excavation is contained within the property line. The so property. I'll, I'll clarify that in the next few slides as well. Okay. Uh, the owners also wish to replace this door with a um, a, a metal ironwork gate that would be more contextual with some of the other neighbors on the block as well. Um, and just to quickly introduce you to the rear side of the building, I'm going to zoom in now. The right side of the page is a existing photograph where we have kind of ghosted in the, um, the extents of the proposed enlargement of the existing two-story addition. Um, the area identified with this red dash uh, is, is helping to identify the extents of the existing exterior wall. Um, the owners wish to build out from this existing extension. It was built in 1994. They wish to build out by approximately eight foot four inches. And their, their hope is to uh, align that exterior face of wall with the adjacent neighbor here at 140 Willow Street. Um, the the neighbor on the other side on the south side 144 willow street is still very much proud of the property and i'll show you some photographs where we step back with the camera and see you know more of the surrounding context uh, the owners also wish to remove a very small window that exists at this second floor existing extension uh, the intent is to infill that with uh, a stucco wall with a subtle imprint. So as a way to recall the footprint of some of that, the window that was there before. And looking also at this second floor, I'm going to reference this photograph on the bottom left of the page. This is a photo that's taken uh, from the second floor terrace where my cursor is hovering on the right side of the drawing. We're standing here looking back at the building. The owners wish to remove an existing door and replace it with a six over six double hung window, which would match the adjacent right here where my uh, cursor is hovering. They'd also like to install a new window on the, I guess, south facing portion of the existing second floor extension. That window also would match the existing um, six over six double hung. That's right adjacent to it. And lastly, this photograph here is taken from the roof, looking down at the second floor extension. This is showing the owners wish to remove this existing mechanical equipment. And if this is a, another vantage point, looking at the proposed new window at that second floor extension on the, the side wall that faces south. Um, I'll zoom in on this here. This is a, our sightline diagram showing the location of the proposed improvements to the rooftop. Uh, what we're seeing here is the new location for relocated mechanical equipment, which would not be visible from the street. Uh, this also represents the proposed construction of a clear story enclosure. This is a, actually a pretty modest, modest enclosure. It's only about 40 square feet, and this is an effort to create a window which would provide light and air to an, a centrally located bedroom below. Um, and then, of course, on the rear side of the building section, I've ad we've identified the proposed eight foot four enlargement of the existing extension. Um, this section shows how the exterior face of wall sits relative to the neighbor here at one, um, 144 Willow Street. It's about eight foot nine feet back from that face of wall. Uh, so this is our zoning diagram, just to clarify 
that the, um, the proposed extension is shown here on the rear side of the building. Uh, again, there is an existing extension, it's 10 foot six, and we're proposing to enlarge that eight foot four. Um, and on this page here, we're taking a closer look specifically at the improvements to the front facade. Um, we've included an enlarged photo, and I hope that this is clear on your screens. This is an enlarged photo of the existing entryway, which we understand to be not original. Um, the owners would like to remove this existing entry door and transom window and replace it with a more, uh, a more appropriate Greek revival style of window, I'm sorry, door with side light windows and a transom, which are more rectilinear. It's the one on the left? Yes, it's this image here on the, it's this drawing on the left. So uh, I'll take a closer look at that now. On this page here, we've, we have an elevation drawing where we photoshopped in the approximate color of paint, which the owners are interested in, in applying to this front facade. This is that soft gray color uh, that I mentioned earlier. This would be in lieu of the kind of creamy, uh, creamy white brick that's currently on the facade. Um, and this is a closer look at the enlarged parlor entry elevation, <clears throat> which is again, introducing the rectangular side lights and rectangular transom glazing and replacing the door, which currently has a very large uh, window light in it with a solid door. Um, in, in our research on this property, we found that the, <clears throat> the, the buildings of 142, 138, and 136 uh, are all very much architecturally in keeping with one another. And it seems that 142 had previously been, uh, that the entry door had previously been replaced and was not original. The, based on the tax photos that we've tracked down for these, this series of houses, it seems that 138 Willow Street is the most accurate representation of the parlor entry that once was. So I'm, I'm trying to zoom in on that photograph here. I hope it's not too terribly grainy on your end. Um, and so to ver just to verify some of our research, we've included here an excerpt from the Clay Lancaster Old Brooklyn Heights book. Um, sorry for being redundant, but I, I'll just I'll just reference this quote for a moment here. These three buildings, 136, 138, 140, 142, are part of a three-storied, three-storied row houses with continuous brick facade. I'm going to skip ahead. Um, number 140 has a fourth floor added. Numbers 136 and 142 have modern colonial revival doorways with plate glass in the windows. Um, so the I understand that property 138 Willow Street is currently, I think, finalizing a renovation in which that parlor entry has been uh, properly maintained and restored. And the owners at 142 just wish to do more of the same and to bring back that original Greek revival style uh, articulation. Um, so this is a closer look at the, uh, the actual elevations of what is currently existing with these fluted columns the uh, the fan shaped transom window and the door with the glazing in the upper panel, and this is the proposed. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll I'll keep moving along here, but please interrupt if if you have questions and would like to focus on this page for a moment. Um, uh, so then, the last component of our proposed improvements to the front air to the front facade are modifying the elevation of that front area way. If you look on the right side of this page on the bottom right, we've diagrammed the area in this hatched zone where we'd like to excavate and lower the paving by it's approximately 16 inches. Um, that would help to align the elevation of the stone paving with the elevation of the garden entry. Um, so this is the proposal here with uh, 
these are bluestone pavers and bluestone treads. And um, these are section drawings. The drawing on the right uh, identifies the area of proposed excavation. The drawing on the left here shows that slightly lowered area away. We're also including a reference for the proposed ironwork gate that would replace what is now a solid wood gate door. You're keeping your bluestone, I guess. Yes, yeah. The proposal would be to maintain bluestone paving. Okay, so now moving to the rear. Uh, here we're looking at a side by side comparison of the existing rear elevation uh, compared to the po proposed rear elevation. Um, the intent is to construct a masonry extension, a uh, red brick facade, and to also construct a narrow uh, balcony on the rear. With, uh, and this would be painted steel frame balcony with a painted steel stair connecting to the rear garden. Uh, the intent also would be to lower the rear area away also by approximately 16 inches. Um, and so the drawing here on the right is highlighting in that red zone that proposed area of excavation. And you can see on the left, that's the, the lowered area. <clears throat> This is the location of the window, which the owners wish to install in where there's currently a door at the second floor. So my cursor is hovering over a door, which they wish to replace with that double hung window. This would match the adjacent existing. And over here on my right side, I'm showing the location of existing window, which the owners wish to infill with stucco and to, um, to acknowledge that that imprint once existed our suggestion is to also install a brownstone lintel and sill at the top and bottom of that to um, recognize that this is something that once was. <clears throat> at the roof level here, uh, this, this area here is identifying the proposed clerestory enclosure, which is just a slight modification to the roof line. Um, this is only uh, about three foot 10 inches above the front cornice. And this is an effort to get light and air into one of the interior bedrooms. Um, and then these are partial elevations that are really just I, helping to illustrate the side elevation of this existing second floor, second floor um, extension. <clears throat> the lower elevation here, we've highlighted the area where we are proposing to install a new window. And that window is shown here in the proposed it would be a six over six painted wood window to match existing. And again, this would have a brownstone lintel and sill. <clears throat> this is a material diagram showing the <clears throat> exterior materials that we're proposing on this rear facade. Um, so uh, a red Glengarry brick cladding at the rear, painted steel deck structure, um, dark painted wood window and door system at this garden level and parlor level window. <clears throat> and the intent would be to restore and patch any of the existing stucco at the second floor extension as needed. The <clears throat> clear story uh, enclosure at the roof level would be a dark painted um, aluminum cladding. Uh, this now is a 3D model of uh, to help illustrate our proposal for the rear facade. And <clears throat> on the right side of the page, we've identified some of the window detailing for all of our different um, proposed window locations. So what you're seeing here on the right side of the page is an enlarged elevation of the garden level window. Um, I'm going to zoom out. This next drawing is identifying the window that's proposed at this rooftop clear story where my mouse, my mouse is hovering here. Is that a green roof? Oh, I should have mentioned that. I'm sorry. Yes. So the, how, <laughs> this would be an extensive green roof um, over the over the um, over this two story extension. How do you so, maintain it without a door out there? 
so the actually this is good timing. So the window that's on this side elevation of the existing two story extension would be um, a simulated double hung, but this is actually a outswing casement window, which would be used for maintenance access for the for an extensive green roof system. Um, all right, so then these are uh, our window details for the proposed window and skylight that sits directly over <clears throat> the um, south side of the extension. And uh, before I click to the next page, I'll just mention that this helps to illustrate the relationship of the rear facade with the adjacent neighbor at 144 Willow Street. Um, the intent again is to align the exterior face of wall with the exterior face of 140 Willow Street. Um, that building also has a uh, similar projection of a rear, um, I guess, rear deck and stair structure. Um, there are some additional extensions on this property. And again, we're not proposing to extend beyond that. Um, so these are photographs looking at 140 Willow Street. Um, so this is the neighbor to the north. And again, our intent is to pull this roof line out to align with that face of wall. And something that I'm sure we should talk about on this call is the relationship with this neighbor and the intent to infill an existing lot line window on that neighbor's property. Um, and then looking on the south side of the lot, this is our neighbor at 144 Willow Street, which again, uh, our proposed extension would would expand the rear facade eight foot four inches, and that facade would still sit back about eight foot nine inches from this base of facade. <clears throat> These are some photos of the existing rooftop conditions, and this is really provided just for more background information on the three coat stucco system, which we would repair and apply as needed for this infilled portion of window. Here's the area again, where we would provide a outswing casement window for maintenance access to the green roof. And these next few slides are identifying <clears throat> existing properties on Willow Street with front yard excavation that is in keeping with what we're proposing for our property. It seems there are a handful of properties on Willow that have um, front yard excavation. Some are more severe than what we are proposing, but uh, we did want to at least reference this as a precedent. <clears throat> um, and that's, so this is our, this is pretty much concludes our presentation that we have prepared to uh, to pass along to LPC, um, I can also walk you through um, more detailed building sections if needed. This is a a section looking at the existing the existing building. This identifies a brick chimney on the west side of the building, which we would remove. <laughs> Um, this also shows, I'll go back to the demo drawing. This also shows locations of existing HVAC equipment, which we propose to remove. And on this drawing here, you can see a little more accurately that Claire story enclosure, which we'd like to, <clears throat> which we're proposing to construct to bring light and air into this middle bedroom. What was the story with the lot line windows? I don't think you really fleshed that out for us. So here's a section, a construction, a proposed section looking at, um, the neighbor to the north, this is 140 Willow Street. And uh, right here, you see an existing window. Uh, below that is another existing window on the lot line. And this extension would uh, require infilling that window. Is that legal? Uh, we understand the window is a existing non-complying window on the lot line. So yeah, um, you, you're allowed. If I may. Yeah. So when you put a a window on 
uh, a lot line, you risk a neighbor, you know, making you lose that window. So you can't get legal light and air from a lot line window. So they have the right to, but I guess the presentation is over and Mr. Yeah. Gordon, are we okay with? Okay, well, what I usually do at this point is I will go to Irene or Judy, since they uh, represent for Brooklyn Heights Association, what they came up with, and then we'll open up, I guess we'll go back to Daughtry and Karen. Okay, Irene or Judy, what does Brooklyn Heights Association think of the uh, proposal? Uh, Judy, did they see it? <coughs> Judy, are you there? Just to unmute. So we did present to Brooklyn Heights Association on Friday. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if Judy's still here. I'm asking to be unmuted, guys. Oh, you're here. <laughs> okay. I'm here. here you know. I need to be unmuted. Okay, you're unmuted. Okay, um, I'll just read what the committee chair wrote. We reviewed this project this past Friday. We believe the commission could find the project to be appropriate. In doing so, we feel the commissioners should give sufficient attention to the rationales for replacing the doorway and changing the brick color. It seems reasonable to suppose that the existing doorway is not original to the house and was a neo-federal or colonial replacement. But the evidence is circumstantial. We would prefer to see a more rigorous argument for rejecting one historical intervention in the case of the doorway, but keeping another in the case of the painted brick. At the least, some paint probes and DOB file investigation could add more data points about when the doorway was changed and when the facade was painted or repainted. In other words, there's no designation photo being shown in this project. I'm not sure why, maybe that was just kind of a careless oversight, but it would be helpful to see what the paint color was at the time of designation. It would be helpful to have some probes done so that we see if this house was always painted. Um, and if not, what was the previous color besides before the cream? If they did a further probe to see what was there before the cream, that we, the Brooklyn Heights Association Committee would be interested. Um, as for the lot line window, because the Landmarks Commission is probably not going to consider that, our committee did not um, uh, make a comment you know, in opposition, although I personally have to say, I think it's a, a real shame and I wish, I wish that there had been, um, at the start of this project, whenever the family who lives at 142 made a decision to enlarge the house that they had um, joined with the neighbors next door because they, they know each other well uh, and come up with some kind of um, remedy to leave a bit, little bit of light and air uh, in that window. But I've given you the Brooklyn Heights Association Landmarks Committee's comment. What did they think of the back, the rear yard addition? Yeah, go ahead, Karen. Uh, Judy, what did they think of the rear? Well, in terms of you, I think you're referring you referring to the style of the rear or the the question. But they did not object to the fenestration of the rear proposed rear. They did not have, um, object uh, to the depth of it. It's as as was noted, I think, by Nicole. Um, there's another addition on the other side. That's at least they're flush. They're flush with the house uh, on one side. And I think um, this house on the other side may go further out. So it's not such an encroachment on the donut as it is on the lot line window. Karen, do you have any other uh, comments or questions? None? Okay. Uh, Mr. Gordon, uh, um, this is Donald Fraser. I'm the next door neighbor. And hello? I, I would like to see if I could have an opportunity to be heard. All right, I'll give you a moment, one minute, go ahead. Okay, well, just like the first presentation, um, the first notice we had of this project was I accidentally ran into my next door neighbor on the street last week. Um, just like the project 
the first project, the only notice we had or communication we had from the architects was a notice being slipped on under our door a couple of days ago. Um, you know, no effort was made to consult with us, to get our thoughts, to to make any effort that we can see to, to come up with a plan that would preserve a lot line window that has been in this building since 1900. And um, it's just, you know, we find it just incredible that no effort was made that, you know, the sense of community or neighborliness to invite us into the project from the get-go, because it's clearly, you know, to, to have a project of this extent has been underway for many, many months. And, um, you know, I feel like it's very similar to that first project that you turned down. Um, we experienced the exact same failure of notice and um, input. And, oh. you know, this, this lot line window, you can see it in if the screen over there, is a four foot by 10 foot window, and it dramatically alters our home. And just common courtesy and decency would have been to invite us in from the very beginning. And we had no input whatsoever. I'll just state that when I did ask earlier in the presentation, <clears throat> I was informed that all the construction is going to be solely on their lot, you know, in their lot. Uh, that's what they're saying, what they're saying, but we'll discuss further. All right, thank you. Okay, now we have to get back to Mike. Uh, any other committee? I think Daughtry, did you have uh, comments? I think you had I, some plug I did. Um, interestingly, I'm not, um, you know, I appreciate the respect that the addition gives to the neighboring buildings. It's not intrusive to me at all, but I actually, feel like it its fenestration and sort of articulation totally dwarfs the 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 historic features of the back of the building. I'm not talking about the Claire Story window on the roof. I'm really just talking about the form and and um, execution of the the extension itself. And I was surprised to hear that Brooklyn Heights Association didn't have any issues with the fenestration um, because I feel that it um, needs to be finessed a little bit in order to give a little bit more deference to the um, six over six windows that we've talked about repeatedly in this presentation about maintaining um, and, and respecting that. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any other comments? Or I, I have a question. Yes, Miss Ellie. The level of the window, is it the same, the one that, that is the neighbor's house, is it the same um, height as this bay window that sticks out at the back of the neighbor's house? Yes. So the neighbor has four windows at that level coming from the bay window. Are you addressing your question to the neighbor? No, to the presenter. Okay, so I just want to make sure it's just the presenter. Uh, I'm just going to uh, tell I So the extension is going to eat up that window that but on the same level the neighbor has four windows from a bay a bay extension that they um they have. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So um I'm going to move the cursor on the screen here. Uh this is showing the roof line that would come out and that's correct. The this one window would be infilled and these windows would remain uh I mean, they, they would not be obstructed by the extension because we so, they, are so the base section our... has only two windows. Okay. Okay, I see. Are there any other? Um, and this, I, I, I also have a concern this. about the color, the change of it from white to gray. I, I agree with what the landmarks um, comments were about the color change and the, the doorway. I'm not, I don't really have an opinion on that. Both doors are fine for me. Okay. Um, Mr. Gordon, may I speak? Yes, Bill Fulnoy, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, it's it's unfortunate about the site, uh, the site, the sight line uh, window, sight line window. Uh, unfortunately, they, sorry, thank you. They don't, I mean, they, it would be, a, it would have been nice if they had talked to the neighbor about that, but the neighbor doesn't have, from my understanding, they can lose that window at any time if construction is being made. It's not guaranteed. Okay, so they can lose that. Um, should have had a conversation about that, but the thing is, 
if they want to extend their building, they can extend it and that window can be lost. Uh, as far as the paint and the front, um, I, I don't even know what the color of the paint is going to be. So I can't say yes or no. Okay, you're saying gray, but I have no idea what that's going to be. So, so as far as that's concerned, sure. can you still see my screen? I, I should does, call does, out the specific number. It's Coventry gray from the. It does, it doesn't doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't. I can't really tell what the color is going to be. Okay. Okay. So I mean, you can point to this, but I can't tell. Usually, we have materials. Unfortunately, we can't do materials in this type of setting. We usually have a uh, materials that can actually see the color. So I can't uh, I can't say I can approve that change of color without seeing what the color is going to be. And also the other uh, uh, indications are that we don't know if there's color uh, paint below that. So as far as that's concerned, those two items I, I don't feel comfortable with. Everything else I feel comfortable with. Everything else. So can yeah, you done. make can we make a motion to just exclude the paint job and the doorway from our uh, motion? I have a question. Have any party well, vote for green this well, building? Well, make a motion. I mean, hold Wait, on. Oh, Stop. I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> let me just answer Ms. Elise's okay. question. Okay, I'm make sorry. A motion, you know, on any parts or full or the full presentation. All right. So um, let me just get over the... uh, Ms. Blount and then. <clears throat> We, what Ms. Blunt wants to say. Go ahead, Esther. Two things. When every time you dig down, like you're going to lower that basement, that does affect the neighbor. We have been finding in this community a lot of people that have damage to their pro property with the party wall. It should be a party wall agreement. The, again, it's outrageous that you want to en encroach upon the neighbor's property and you don't sit down with them and talk to them. This is this is ridiculous. And I want to know, do, do you have a party wall agreement with the neighbor? What's in place to protect his property? It, can I answer that? Um, okay. the, the neighbor here to the south, this is a, an independent wall. So uh, on this line here, we have an independent wall. We do have a party wall with our neighbor to the north and the owners have already uh, had test pits dug and test soil boring. The test pits were dug to understand the extents of the adjacent neighbors uh, foundations as well as ours. And the, our structural engineer on the project confirmed that the proposed work is not going to disturb the foundations of the adjacent properties. Um, so we have testing uh, reports for that work uh, that were that was conducted in uh, that was conducted, I think, in December to investigate whether or not it was viable for the owners to pursue the extension. Will there so be any that, underpinning required, Nicole? No. So, F, I want to add to your point that uh, we had this issue a few months back with another house in Brooklyn Heights. I believe it was on Willow Street. And uh, we did ask, we asked the same question, and the response we got is that the neighbor's insurance would cover any damage. We had a problem with that, but we did not talk about it subsequent to that. So it's the same issue. I'm sorry, John, that's not true. The neighbor's insurance will not cover that. This is a construction issue. You have to have a construction engineer a construction attorney that understand construction law in the city of New York. That's what you need, not your homeowner insurance. If my property gets, gets damaged, I lose my insurance. Uh, so, Ernie, let's finish this and talk about that after we go into other session. Okay. I'd like to make a motion, please. Yes, Bill, go ahead. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to accept as presented, except for the color of the front the front of the building. Do I have a second? May I, I make second. a friendly friendly amendment? Uh Daughtry? Is that Daughtry? Yeah, that's me, but does Mr. Flinoy accept my friendly amendment? Okay, give you an amendment. <laughs> um I would like to include um the recommendations from the Brooklyn Heights Association to uh probe the history of the door opening as well as the paint. Do you accept that, Bill? 
I was going to ask. <laughs> okay, the same okay. This bill whoa, 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 Stop, 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 John. Please. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> okay. Uh, question uh, for the presenter. Okay, you mentioned that there were other doors. Okay, that were similar to this, along these the four houses that were actually the row houses. Is that true? Yes. Yes. So, so the 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 reference that we had included earlier in the presentation was referring to an excerpt from um, the, the Clay Lancaster book written on the Willow Street properties, which identifies this property 142 and also 136 as having non-original um, modern parlor entries. And uh, in our research, looking at the historic photos of these properties, we understand that the uh, 138 Willow Street parlor entry appears to be the most intact based on the original entryway. So we've referred to 138 Willow Street as a point of reference for the intent to restore the entry. And that's that's why we included that sheet. I apologize if that's not been clear. No, I, I heard you. Okay. The fact so is what I'm going to do, Daughtry, is what I'm going to do is I'm going to accept the, uh, the recommendation from the Brooklyn Heights Association in regards to the paint. Okay, but I'm going to pass on the door. Excuse me, Bill. Excuse me, Bill. Um, sure. I didn't go into it because normally the community board isn't interested in all the fine, fine details that the BHA committee well, goes into. But we have a very experienced researcher on our committee who's the committee chair, and he's done a lot of research. This applicant has done very little. Um, they haven't looked at DOB filings. They haven't really studied the history, and they haven't provided a lot of documentation. So. Um, Daughtry's suggestion is well taken because there does need to be more research to explain why um, they're changing the door and why um, they're choosing the paint color. Okay, let me just let me just get this back under control. Uh, <laughs> Bill's motion has been presented. Uh, Daughtry, well, oh, oh, yeah. yeah, Daughtry, Daughtry's giving me a friendly amendment, and I just heard some additional information. I just heard some additional information, and I have been. Educated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. By uh, a, a, a superior intellect. <laughs> so I will include Daltrey's both of Daltrey's um, uh, friendly amendments. Okay. Thank you. And I will, <laughs> I will second the motion so we can get this moving. So the motion's now been seconded and presented. Are there any comments or questions on the motion? Okay, hearing none, uh, somebody else wants to do the roll? Uh, I can if you want. Okay, all right, I'm in favor. You can put me down first. Just reread, reread the proposal so everybody's clear, please. Okay, Karen, can you, uh, I know it's a little confusing, but okay. We accept the proposal with the amendment, uh, sorry, we accept the proposal except the proposed, dang. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We move to approve the application except for the color on the facade. The amendment is to include the recommendations from the BHA that we further that they the applicant further probes the history of the door change and the color. Does that sound about right? Yep. Sounds good to me. Yep, that okay. works. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Here we go. So Carlton is yes. Yes. Irene Jenner. Irene Jenner? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, Karen Johnson? Yes. Hazra Ali? Yes. Yes. Um, Ernest? Uh, yes. Augustus? Yes. Esther Blount? No. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, Daughtry? Yes. Uh, John Jew? Abstain. Because yes. of the neighbor. Okay. Sorry, was that a yes or a no? Abstain. 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 Oh, abstain, abstain. Sorry. Okay, gotcha. Sorry. Um, Bill? Bill? Bill is a yes. He moved the motion. Yes. 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 I, I figured yes. I just want to get it. Um, <laughs> Brian? Yes. 
Okay. Alan Washington, are you there? I am, yes. Fantastic, yes. And Judy. I'm going to abstain. Abstain. Okay, so we have. Um, I, I came up with nine. Yes. yes. One. Two. One no, two abstentions. Yes, that's what I have. Great. All right, so it passes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we're heading to the big one. And on 11 Clifton Place in, Clint, in Clinton Hill. Now, I'm not going to, since we've already had this motion, had this uh, presentation in front of us, uh, I'm not going to recite the whole, uh, <laughs> you know, description again. So if we have that on record. I need to redo it again. Uh, I'm going to take this one a little differently. I am. We've been. The board has received, and I have read uh, letters from neighbors and community groups who have expressed opposition. What I'm going to do is facilitate it and summarize as best as I can the letters that are in opposition. And then after we do that, I will then open it up back to the uh, applicant to, I guess, respond and to represent uh, as much as possible. And then we'll have a discussion. All right, now we received letters uh, from uh, Virginia Pilpot, who is at 12 Clifton Place and who is an who is, says he's an experienced in construction financing. Um, he's come out in opposition uh, to this, uh, to the application based upon the plans that you feel that the plans are not uh, giving an accurate presentation. The, the plans do, you know, there is a description that shows that there will be, uh, as we have discussed, a lowering of the, you know, more construction going downwards again, more excavation on this one. Read from and the letter, can you read from the letter? The letter is about five pages long. You have That's, to just take the portion that is relevant. Because you read five, out. I, I, it's a five page, which makes many several points. I would prefer that we just have a this a, a, a I could just leave I could just go without this without oh, we don't all need it. go, it's available to us online yes I, I am trying I am willing to give a summary it's sent out to anyone who is interested in enough to read it right yeah. I could skip yeah. it right yeah. now I'll tell you what I'll skip it right now and just say that there was opposition based upon uh problems with the plans and the letters can be read. It's the same thing that we have opposition from the uh, Society for Clinton Hill, signed by Ann Bush, uh, also indicating opposition because of the problems that of the uh, at the at the with the uh, with the plans that there was the proposal does not fit with the uh, with what the Clinton Hill is, and also we received another letter from the BAM, you know, Preserve BAM Historic District well, yeah, of, uh, by, signed by Charles Cohen and Susan uh, Pillar, also ex in generally uh, giving opposition to the uh, proposal. Now I'm gonna turn it over to the presenter, to the presenter, the applicant, uh, to represent why they feel that this should be uh, uh, say, adopted by the committee. Uh, Carlton. Carlton? Yes. Um, have members of the land use committee had opportunity to uh, read those letters? I think it would be important if they haven't read them to at least listen to some of the rationale from the community before you turn it over to the presenter. 
Well, so that is what's sent, from my understanding. No, 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 no. Is that enough to say that it's on the drive? They said at this moment, in this meeting, here's some of the rationale for the argument. How long is that going to? How long is that going to take? Chair right. Gordon, Wait, what's what's right? what is the protocol right. here? Chair Gordon. Yes. Committee Chair Gordon, uh, we are keeping a running list of attendees at this publicly noticed meeting that wish to make public commentary. I think we will go with that, and uh, we'll we'll take we'll take comments from from those who wish to present for a couple of minutes, you know, a minute or two each of all the people who wish to uh, present. Wait, I'm sorry. I just have to get a point of protocol here. I don't know what the right thing to do is, but in all other uh, presentations, the presenter is presented, and then we've had discussion, and then we've allowed people to comment. So I'm just, I know we've seen this presentation before, but I'm assuming something has changed based on last oh, month. Good. I'm sorry. I so changed. I'm asking to what the protocol is here. All right. Normally we don't have a large, you know, like a hearing type thing. Given the interest and the huge interest on this one, we're trying to give the uh, community a chance to, uh, let's say, have some participation. Uh, Normally we don't, we normally don't have a large, but since there is such a, a heavy interest in this one, that's why we're going to go in this uh, manner. So it's a, uh, we're trying to do the best we can with this circumstance. Uh, what I'd like to do now is to give a few minutes to the, to the applicant to represent or to or address the problems that have come up or at least the problems that have been already addressed in the in the letters concerning the both the rooftop, the extensions on the roof, as well as the uh, excava proposed excavations. So we're going to have a Gordon, Mr. Gordon. This is how it worked. We had the presentation. The community was not notified and able to comment. So tonight's meeting is to hear from the community. We already saw the presentation. We don't need to see the presentation again. We don't need a a presentation. I, will, I do want to give the presenter an opportunity to, to answer and to state. So we'll do that and then we'll have the community will what? have a chance. What, is it, what are they answering and stating to? John, yeah, not you're, not sure. you're not sure. Give them a chance to, you know, if you don't, <laughs> I want to give them a chance. Go Let's ahead. Let's proceed. Let's proceed. That's fine. Can I speak? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Hi, I'm Jenna. I'm back. Um, so um, at the last meeting, we were disapproved because there was confusion about to what extent we needed to engage the community. And that's something very important to us. So um, per the community board's request, we met with the block association who actually provided a letter of neutrality saying that they are not opposed, they don't have any formal opposition as long as the proposal passes LPC and DOB. Uh, and we also presented to the Society of Clinton Hill. And I believe, um, other community groups were in that meeting um, and uh, we heard their suggestions and we spoke to the client about their suggestions, but our, they just don't work with our spatial requirements. And we really want to maintain the existing um, cornice line at the front and the back. And that's why be we believe that this proposal, because it is set back and sunk in, it has a little impact on the neighborhood and there will be no change to the existing front and back um, cornice lines. Um, All right. I can, I can go, I can share my screen and show you again um, how visible, like to what extent the proposal will be visible I'm happy to take any answers, um, whatever you think will facilitate this conversation. Well, the biggest question that came, the biggest thing that's been pointed out, uh, 
on you, especially at along the, the front of the building, mm -hmm. is the extension of the of the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the roof, you know, from what I've read and what I've seen is that the roof is not compatible uh, with the other buildings along that block. That the proposed roof, that the proposal will not fit in with other structures along Clifton Place. Well, this is a rendering of our proposal. This is what you would see of it from the street. So you can see the Pratt building is way higher and building number 21 is also higher than us. And the part of the proposal that you will see will actually not be noticed because it is made of brick and um, lead, uh, lead coated copper, which, you know, blends with the, with the surrounding. So I don't, um, quite understand what they mean by it doesn't fit in with the rest of the block. I do. 21 is not the frame of reference on that block. It is not, you know, it is not the frame of reference, nor is Higgin Hall the frame of reference on Clifton Place. You cannot reference those two buildings. And that is incorrect. You know, I would rather hear the community speak and I'll be quiet so they can explain it. At least to this committee, they have to vote on this. Thank you. I see a very even cornice line without this addition. Mr. Gordon, since um, there's no changes in her presentation, I think we should now let the community speak. She did not make any adjustments. so. The community should that's, speak that's why that's they the object. You're correct. That's the I purpose agree. of this meeting. Okay, how many people do we uh or how many group or present on the from community people do we have? Rosario? Can you hear me? I hear you. Well, I was asking for uh, Taya or who has the list of the uh, people who wish to be who wish to speak? I'm one of them. Okay, well, hold on before. Okay, I... Hold on. Excuse me. Is this over? <clears throat> Sandy Rayburn, Rosaria Sinisi, Susan Choi, Mark Von Hoff, Gaiety. We have five. Yes. Okay, so two minutes each. Okay, give, okay read out the first. Uh, Okay, uh, okay, Carol Ann, you can read out the first name again. Where, go ahead. I don't have the list in front of me, so. Sandy Rayburn. Okay. Ms. Rayburn? Unmute, Sandy, unmute. Ms. Rayburn, you need to unmute. The easiest way to do that is just to press your space bar. Maybe you can unmute her. Yeah, unfortunately, that is that that feature on WebEx was taken away by the city. <laughs> we, we are, I see it. I see Miss Rayburn, but Ms. I don't. Sinisi? Miss yes. Rosaria Sinisi? Let's come back to Miss Rayburn. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of CRNP, which is the Citizens for Responsible Neighborhood Planning of Clinton Hill. We're one of five groups involved in historic districting and protection in Clinton Hill and Fort Greene. I'd like to say there are at least 14 letters in opposition, including from groups and individuals. And if the members of the committee have not taken time to read them, I think they seriously should before they vote on this. Um, we oppose this application because there's no justification for permitting the applicants to exceed the guidelines that LPC has established for either the top floor addition or the front, rear, and side yards covered in Chapter 8 for modifications to stuff that's visible for the public thoroughfare. This is an intact block. It's a streetscape of similar structures, and the applicants have cited precedents on other blocks that are not at all analogous to the architecture or the streetscape of Clifton Place and add no rationale to this proposal. 
Our first opposition is based on the, the design of the additional top floor, which is it's not necessary to have a visible top floor at all. There are multiple examples, both on the south side of Clifton Place, the next block of Clifton Place, and around the corner on Grand Avenue of buildings of this scale. This is a lower middle class brownstone block, and there were architects who actually added, or they didn't add, they included hidden top floors. It's perfectly possible to do, and most of my neighbors don't even know which ones those houses are. They're not yes. visible from oblique angles at the either end of the block. They're not visible from across the street. And the fact that the applicant refuses to consider this, which has even been submitted in you know, sketch form with sections, with measurements taken off of these other buildings, indicates that they really don't have any respect for the historic streetscape. There's no reason why they can't add a floor that's hidden. It's perfectly easy. Time. Um, Time. Time. Thank you. Okay. okay. Give us the next one. Uh, what's the next one? Can I try? Hello. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, wait, uh, uh, either Carolyn or uh, Taya, just give me the name of the next can we, Ms. Can we try Miss Rayburn again? Yes. Would you? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. We can. Ah. Yes, it's a now she's frozen. Thing. You can't hear me now? Can't hear. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, currently, there's a lot of talk. I'm Sandy Rayburn of Preserve Our Brooklyn Neighborhoods. Currently, there's a lot of talk about comprehensive. Ooh. Oh, dear. Ms. Rayburn? Um, yes. Ms. Rayburn, you're having some bandwidth issues. So we're, I'm going to request that you turn your video feed off so that we can hear your voice. Okay, let's see what I can do here. No problem. Uh, where do I uh, okay, get Okay, your, my... your, your video is off, so go ahead and try and speak again, please. All right, I'm going to start again. Yes. I'm both a Fort Greene resident and the president of Preserve Our Brooklyn Neighborhoods, and my two minutes are about the dismantling of the comprehensive character and context of our historic blocks. These blocks and buildings are under the stewardship and concerns of Community Board 2. Those of us as residents who are being sidelined by out of scale skyscrapers and to put it diplomatically exotic building proposals are asking you to reflect on the anything goes building invasions happening here and now. The 11 Clifton Place architectural plan to plop an anomalous appendage on top of an 1870s classic low rise row house begs utter amazement, most especially as there is an historically compatible alternative plan laid out by CRNP. Everyone can be a winner in this matter. I've addressed more detail in my written submitted testimony. What I do want to take the opportunity to say is that residents have already viewed the specter of CB2's blessing and inexplicable vote on behalf of an inappropriate 24-story tower at 130 St. Felix, flouting the BAM historic district. Residents are now watching a sterile new structure go up at 532 Clinton Avenue, where a pre-Civil War Italianate used to be. And then we're reading about the abhorrent 176 Washington Park Carriage House Tinker Toy proposal, just to mention three of the many rogue building plans, which seem seconds. to slip by with impunity. My hope is that 11 Clifton Place will not be yet one more site in which a failure of respect and abject disdain for our patrimony will be permitted to proceed. Proactive engagement in protecting our unique Brooklyn heritage, and yes, comprehensive oversight needs to be implemented now. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next person. Uh, what's the name of the next person? Susan Choi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hi, Go thank you for letting me speak. Two minutes. Thank you. Um, I'm not prepared to speak formally. I did submit a letter. I'm afraid that if I read my letter in full, I would exceed my two minutes. So I'm going to ask that the members of the committee do read my letter, which you received um, on Saturday, I believe, and was distributed. And I'm just going to make a couple of points. First of all, um, Jenna referenced a letter of neutrality from our block association. I just want to make clear that I'm not aware of such a letter and that I, what I do understand as a member of our block association is that we um, 
as a block association, I'm not taking a position because frankly, we're not able to, we're in too much disagreement. And I actually don't even want to say that. I don't know if we're in agreement or not agreement. We decided it was best for our association to take no position. So that should not be taken or framed as a tacit approval of this proposal. And I do feel that the way in which Jenna presented it um, implied that it might amount to a tacit approval. It is not that. Um, secondly, I do find it distressing that Jenna reiterated several of the points from her original presentation, again, um, which I find particularly uh, problematic about this proposal, that the proposal, the proposed addition on the rooftop would not be noticed. I think that anyone who comes to the street in regards to the mock-up will understand that it will very much be noticed. 30, One of the 30. reasons it would be noticed is our unbroken roof line and our low-rise buildings, which is the last thing I want to discuss. Our, our block is underbuilt. There's a lot of unbuilt far on our block relative to the other blocks around us in the historic district. If this proposal is approved, it's going to set a precedent that could potentially have such an addition on top of each of these buildings. Now, we don't know how to downzone. I've just learned about these words this week, but I do want to point out that our block is unique because of this underbuilt quality, which I feel this proposed addition could exploit. Could look for many for such. Thank you. What is the name of your association? I'm a person who lives here. I have no association. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, I guess that's the fourth up to the fourth person. Von Hoff. Hey there, how you doing? This is uh, Mark Von Hoff. I live at 17 Clifton Place with uh, Lori Swan and our two children and mother. So we're a multi generational family. Um, I just wanted to, to add to what Susan had said regarding the block. It, it is an underbuilt block. Um, and as a result, it there it is. It has a certain unique quality in terms of light. Uh, it's an east west uh, directional street. So you get light that pours onto the south side of the street continuously. Uh, this is something that you see uh, now with the cafe being used in the pandemic era with you know, people being able to sit outside. Um, so this is this would set a precedent that I think would alter that the character of the street significantly. Um, historically, this this block has been has been one of the less grander streets uh, in the area. It has a unique quality that is that is different from say St. James or Green Streets. Um, historically, uh, we had. Mm -hmm. Hello. Okay. Uh, historically, we. Um, and I, I sent a letter regarding the Truman Capote had lived in this uh, in on in this house and made a reference to this block. I'll let you guys read the letter and uh, take a look at what he had said. But he references the certain unique quality of the street. Um, uh, that that's it. All right. Thank you. May I ask uh, what organization Rosaria was involved with? Is she still there? Yeah, I'm here. Thank Citizens you. for Responsible Neighborhood Planning. There's a letter included in the material that was submitted, and I hope everybody reads it. It has a bunch of exhibits that shows photographs of the street and the context involved with this proposal. Thank you. Okay, I think we have one more person. Hi, Trey. Hi, that's, I said that's, that's my right. wife. Yeah, that, that's my wife, Guy Trey. Um, my name is is Nick Lehman. I, I also signed a letter that I submitted um, uh, on, on Saturday or Sunday. I, I would just highlight the same points that Rosaria and Susan and Mark have, have also highlighted. Um, I'm a resident of the street. It's a beautiful block. The addition is highly visible from the street. And I think it would be a, a complete shame to, to ruin the streetscape um uh given um given the, the proposals that, that have been made for 11 clifton um the the rooftop addition will raise um, almost six feet above the cornice um i can't imagine that landmarks would approve it but um uh but you know I'm, I'm, i guess i'm here to, to raise my hand to say that i'm not supportive of it um as a member of the community um 
as Rosaria mentioned, um, there are what? many houses on the street um, that do have additions that are not visible from the street. My house is, is one of them. Um, and so I, I would just wish that the owners of this house would consider alternatives um, versus a, um, an addition where it is very highly visible from the street and would ruin the historic character of, of the block. 30 seconds. That's it for me. Okay, thank you. All right, that's that every, uh, that all the people who have asked to speak. That's it, yes. That's it. Okay, thank you. All right, now we go back to our committee. Uh, any other further comments from the committee uh, from the board members, committee members? Mr. Gord, I hope, you know, so many people said in letters and, you know, it's a shame that I feel that <clears throat> all the committee members didn't get a chance to look at it. But the person, remember from the presentation before that she said it was going to affect the person next door, I think it's nine Clifton Place, because this is 11, right? And they said they gave them notice. Well, in the letter that that, that person wrote, they said it was no notice. I mean, they somebody, again, slipped a piece of paper under their door with no explanation. They didn't know what they was looking at. And this directly affects their property. It's going to affect their chimney. This kind of notification, there's no discussion. You never heard of knocking on somebody's door and that you are actually going to mess with their chimney? This is ridiculous. And we, the people on this block are so intelligent. They laid out plans on how they can get this, this addition without being visible. I mean, laid it out, had drawings and everything, architectural door. It's all in the in the um drive or whatever you call it. All the letters, all the documentations, all the the um pictures, and they can still get what they want without having this physical thing or destroying the character of this block. Okay, thank you, Daughtry. May I make a motion? Certainly. I would like to make a motion to disapprove the application. And I second. That's Miss Ali. Azra, yes. Okay. okay. We have a motion to disapprove and a second. Are there any further comments on the motion? Or any comments on the motion? Hi, this is Bill. Yes, oh, Bill. sorry, Bill. Go ahead. Sure, no problem. Um, I just have two questions. Uh, well, actually, one question, one comment. Um, when this was presented before to the committee, um, could the board office tell us what the result was? Result at, uh, at LPC, you mean? No, here at the committee. No, so we, we said it was rejected. Before. We rejected. It was rejected. Thank oh. you. That's what I wanted to yeah. hear. Oh, you rejected. weren't at the. Okay, I'm sorry. I wasn't there. I wasn't okay, there. That's, that's why. why. Yeah. That's where right. I'm asking. Yeah, that's why we're here. Yeah. Okay. This is, it's an unusual yeah. situation, but it was rejected at the uh, February. We already, yeah, because this is March. We rejected it at the February meeting. Thank you. Okay. Now, I, can okay. I... Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, give me a uh, comment. <laughs> okay. I have always and consistently voted against anything that I felt was not in character with the surrounding buildings, whether it be in Dumbo, whether it be in Brooklyn Heights, I have always voted against anything that was out of character. Especially, well, you get, with new buildings, you can go out of character, okay, brand new buildings. But with old buildings that have basically additions or anything else, I've always voted against them. Sometimes I was the only one. <laughs> yes, we <know. laughs> I'm going to speak now. We actually heard from the community, which is what a community board is supposed to do. The other piece that I want to acknowledge that we do here in Community District 2 for landmarks is that whenever we have a Brooklyn Heights landmark, we defer to the Brooklyn Heights person to speak first. And we follow at least understanding what the affected community that is represented by that person has to say. Why we do not do that for the other 
portions of the district is a concern now. And I'm very glad that the other portions of the district are beginning to speak up. And we have to give them the same consideration that we give to Brooklyn Heights. I should also add that we did not give the community consideration for the St. Felix 24 story building. That has to be revisited. Can I speak now? Uh, yes. I just, the last speaker, the last community person that spoke gave a suggestion and I believe uh, Miss, no, I don't know the name, I don't see it. She spoke about um, doing an extension where it's not obvious. Just so you know, I live around the corner from Clifton Place. So I'm I'm familiar with that, that section of the building. And I think the um, Ms. Jenner should take into consideration the, the recommendation that they made about buildings that did the extension without it being obvious and changing the, the building line of the cornice. Okay. So that's it. All right, do we have any other comments? We have a motion. Yeah, I just, wanna, I just wanna bring this to the committee's attention, you know, uh, about, we raised the issue about um, uh, party rules agreement you know, I don't know, we talk about building, but they never talk about what's happening in a district. Uh, Clinton Hill, Fort Green has a abundance of, uh, you know, properties being damaged because of construction or renovation. And because, and guess who gets hurt? The person who has invested and invested in their property, when they uh, get, when the property is damaged, they call the building department. The Should building we talk department about this now out. or after the vote? Okay, I just want to just want to they get a violation and they can't resolve it because it's on because because they're the owner owner of the property. But we can talk about this after the vote. I think it's very important. Okay, thank you, Ernest. All right. If there are no other um if there are no other comments or questions, uh we'll do the roll call. Okay, uh, Carlton. Okay, yes, I'm in favor of the motion. Irene. Yes. Uh, myself, yes. Uh, Hazra. Yes. Ernest. Yes. Esther. Yes. Daltrey. Yes. Yes. Dawn. Yes. Uh, Bill. Yes. 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 Got it. <laughs> Brian? Yes. Uh, Ellen? Mr. Washington, Ellen? Mr. Washington registered a yes before he had to step away. Okay. okay, thank you. And Judy? Judy? Okay, the uh, eyes have it. I 11. Yes, 11. 11 is it? Miss goes. Stanton is muted. Okay. Oh. Oh, we'll get it when she, when she comes back, we'll, we'll add it to the total. All right, uh, thank you. Now we'll go over to. Um, it passed to disapprove. Am I, am I yeah, yeah, this is a motion okay. to disapprove has passed. Yes. Thank you. Motion to disapprove has passed. Um, <laughs> I just want to get a, uh, again, approval of the February minutes. Uh, are there any objections to the mill? Anything that has to be added to the February minutes? Hearing none, uh, in the February minutes have been approved. I, again, I thank Karen Johnson for her hard work on this. This is very difficult work. Uh, she's trying to keep her business going as well as doing this, uh, doing these many things. It's our task, so I thank Karen for this work immensely. Uh, thank you, Karen. Carlton, I'm sorry. This is thank Judy. You I, I would have, I would have voted to to. We'll, we'll count it. We'll count it. Make it a twelve. Yeah. Okay. Make it a twelve. Uh, we're not going to fuss over that. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Uh, next is on the chair's report. Um, I'm just going to go with one small item. I had a couple of things in mind, but I'm just going to one small item. Is the I think most people may have heard by now 
that uh, to 20, the Duffield Street Underground Railroad building has been acquired by the city of New York. Uh, so hopefully that will help in its preservation in the long term. We'll see what happens down the road, but right now the city, the, the private owner has conveyed it to the city of New York. Um, I was going to have a discussion, ask for a, a discussion on the uh, proposals from uh, Speaker, City Speaker Corey Johnson on the planning together. I think we can wait on that. Uh, I know Carol, you, you wanted us to get into that, but I think I think we can. Is it possible? Is it something we can hold off on, Carolyn? Right? I guess you so. know that has already. I don't know hearing. when. I, yeah, I do okay. not know. I do not know when it will be called for a vote in the council. Mm -hmm. um, so, and our agenda is not going to be any lighter in the upcoming months. All right, we'll try our best. So, you know, yeah. even if we grabbed a little bit of it now and um, a little bit a little later, and um, when we get to another point in the agenda, I'd like to respond to Mr. Dew's comment about um, Brooklyn Heights having. Um, a say, shall we say, well, um, on the certificate of appropriateness. The uh, district manager, so go ahead. Okay, so I'd, I'd like to say on behalf of Community Board 2 that the Brooklyn Heights Association reaches out to, to the district office on a monthly basis to learn if there are any certificate of appropriateness within their uh, historic district. They take the initiative then to get in touch with the architect of record in order to review the application um, before it comes to the to, to the land use committee. And that 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 is an offer that is open to every cons every constituent group within the district. It is not for any special uh, group or neighborhood. Thank you. And I need so to respond double. to that. And yeah. I, I have to respond to that. I absolutely agree with that. My point being that whatever we do for Brooklyn Heights, if they're getting a special dispensation, that should be offered to every community. The point is that every community should be afforded. If we're doing something for one community, mm -hmm. we should also offer it mm -hmm. to the other community. They could choose to accept it or not. We should identify the folks from the Borum Hill Association, from the Clinton Hill Society, from the Fort Greene Association. All those folks need to be given the same opportunity. That's what this is about. It's about equal treatment. We have to really begin to focus on that in Community Board 2. I'll give you another example. The BQE, when it gets to Brooklyn Heights, it becomes a cantilever. Every place else is above ground. Why is that? Because the Brooklyn Heights people spoke out. You have to speak out and be heard. I'm saying that for everyone. So these communities that have not been given the same dispensation are entitled to and ask. But if they don't know that they're entitled to it, they don't ask for it. So tonight is a new beginning. Thank you, Carol Ann. Carol, Carol Ann, what? Part, what time of the month to these community groups call to find out what will be on the agenda, what will be coming up that may affect their neighborhood? Uh, uh, let me just check my calendar and I'll give you. So there isn't a particular date per se because it just depends on when the third Wednesday falls. But in general, I would say that they can do so by the first Friday. Okay, uh, Daughtry signaling us. Daughtry, go ahead. I just have a suggestion about this, which is that it's sort of what we do when we're building buildings. We ask the contractor to give us a two week or a four week look ahead. Maybe we could add a section to our agenda that puts uh, a focus on the future so that community board members who perhaps aren't as resourced as, no offense, Brooklyn Heights Association, you guys are very organized. We, we take responsibility for reaching out to underrepresented community organizations. Um, so if we could add that to our agenda, I think we'll all be much clearer about what's coming down the line and we can all reach out um, to help these organizations but have a voice. 
We do not know who we do not know who is coming actually until just about that time. Yeah, we're we're just about, yeah. So, so we just, I don't have a six week look ahead. Yeah. I have at most a two week look ahead, and that's why I gave that date. Right. Yeah. It's I've been very, on the community, very, on the community board for quite yeah. a while. I had some I had some history with board too, particularly yeah. when uh, Jerry Rangini was the chairperson and Kathy Williams was the district manager, uh, they would routinely uh, reach out and give me a call if they knew there was an item that was going to impact Clinton Hill Fort Greene. As a courtesy, she would pick the phone and say, Ernest, look out for this. This is coming from the district manager, not me calling in. Because we could have certain structured agendas, and then there are items that just pop up that you know aren't in the normal, uh, you know, uh communication channel and they said look just look out for this is this is coming down the pipe that sort of courtesy help the and the and the community appreciates it the way it stands now and in my email to you this afternoon you know i said to you that uh the, the 130 south phillips street is a bone of contention you know uh and and and, and it's still here so just reach out Okay. Judy, I think we need to do our homework more then. Yeah, okay. So yes, Karen and Judy. I, I just think it sounds like we as members need to do more outreach because we can't depend on I mean Carol Ann has her hands full with how many committees? So we need to do that outreach. But there she's not gonna have time to call us. We need to read the agenda and and figure out who needs to know about it. Yeah, I agree. I think that I know because Karen, you Dumble also does a good outreach, and I know that they're on top of it. But any community group that stays on top of this and wants to be involved is welcome to be involved. Judy, I see you waving your hand. You actually got yeah. on camera. Yeah, I just wanted to say that Caroline doesn't do anything special for me. Um, I call her, and sometimes I, I, I see something on a, a landmarks calendar. And I, I believe it's been my experience that the board office doesn't isn't always the first to know. Sometimes it takes applicants a while to contact CB2. Um, isn't, don't, we don't always have a lot of notice. And I'm very, uh, what should I say, kind of aggressive in getting in touch with the <laughs> applicants. The community board doesn't make them speak to me. I mean, I you know I have to do the work and call them up and ask yeah. them, and they rarely refuse, but. Yes, um, Judy, I, said, yes. I don't feel that I'm getting any special treatment. Right. It wouldn't be yes. offered to anybody else. Yeah, there's no special treatment. Everybody should get special treatment. Judy, that's the point. We need to be uniform. This actually needs to be put into a very simple written procedure so that we can all be on the same page as to what's available. Whether it gets used or not, at least we are all saying the same thing. Right now, That's we're all over the place. Bill, Bill Flournoy. Okay, um, I represent downtown Brooklyn. Okay, so as a representative of the committee board for downtown Brooklyn, I make a point to look out for anything that comes across that affects downtown Brooklyn, because I represent downtown Brooklyn. So if something comes across for downtown Brooklyn that I think is gonna affect a business or a group of people, I make a point of reaching out to them. I reached out to all the stores in the area. They know who I am. They know I represent the community board too. And I represent them. If they have an issue, they can talk to me. They can send me an email. That's why I'm on the community board to represent the people of downtown Brooklyn. Okay, so my feeling basically is this. If you're in a community and you are basically saying that someone should do the outreach, that's your job. I agree with Bill. All right, now I'd like to, if there are no others, I'd like to go over to community forum where for non-board members, non-committee members. Well, now, what, what, a, what, a, what about the Corey Johnson proposal? Are we gonna say a few words about that? Carol Ann is asking us to at least begin it tonight. We may not get into a lot of detail, but we gotta say a couple of words so that we have some idea where we're going with this. What are we going to do for next month? Everybody needs to read the, the proposal and the community board's pros and cons list so we can have a good conversation about it. It's very complex. I agree. I think we should, I'm gonna to try to uh, 
let's let's you know between Carol and myself and whoever we're going to try to shove it in and get it get it and uh, get a hopefully a decent. We did have some early discussion on this, I recall from last month. So please go through it. I'm going to leave it up to you folks to come up with a good. I've looked at it. I don't have any particular uh, feeling on one way or the other from what I've seen. So I'm going to leave it up to members to come up with a good uh, proposal so we can then give it to Carol Ann and Carol Ann can take it from there. Uh, well, let me before, before we dismiss it. Before we dismiss it, I got to share this. The city council has already had a hearing on the plan, and it was pretty much, I want to say, close to universally panned because it actually extends the process and removes the community board. They give you three options. You can choose one, and it can be denied as it gets up the ladder. So it's already been analyzed. You should know going forward that that is the sense of all of the uh, uh, all of the folk that spoke. The 59 districts have already weighed in on this. Plastic plate. Okay. Can I, uh, uh, Carlton, may I say something, please? Yes, Bill, and then I'd like to go over to community forum. Not a problem. Uh, economic development, we've already taken a look at it. We've actually sent in a letter already to the board office that I shared with the other community board letters, the members, sorry, with the other economic development employment committee. Okay, about some of the shortcomings. I had a, um, a military, well, actually, I had an analyst already go over it and basically take a look at it and gave his uh, analysis of it. And we sent it in. And if you want to use that as a starting point, you can, but some of the points that John brought up were some of the points that were also brought up. So there's already something that we've actually started out already. It's a, it's a long document. It's a lot. <laughs> it is it. very long. <laughs> so you're, you. yeah, if you're if you can, you know, I, when you can, uh, Bill, if you want to email to the committee members uh, what you guys came up with from the other com your committee, uh, that would be nice, and then we can at least get a sense as to. Uh, Something that we could work with. All right. Okay. Well, Ted for the board office can do that. Okay. Community well, forum. Mr. Ford, can I say one thing before you go to community forum? Okay. Something was said tonight that was, I mean, about this home owner's insurance. This is the myth. I didn't even know until about a year or two ago. If 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 somebody is doing construction uh, next door to you and your property gets damaged, your home insurance does not cover it. Anybody have a house right now, read your insurance policy. It does not cover it. You have to get an agreement with the people. I don't know the legal terms next door, so they will be responsible. Really, you have to hire a lawyer. It's, it's very complicated. But the bottom line is, if you don't believe me, read any, and you can't add it. It's not even a matter of, I'm going to pay extra to get this in there. They won't do it. Don't research it yourself. It, it does not happen. You could be a millionaire. You can't buy that type of insurance. I'm telling you. That's <laughs> because it doesn't, cover, it doesn't cover earth removal that you don't see. All right? The neighbor next door at number nine got a letter from people from number 11 saying that they would have their engineer or construction to come in, photograph the interior, and so if anything gets damaged. Well, guess what that is? That's BS, because you can see things visibly with your eyes. It's the invisible that you don't see. You don't see the damage to your foundation because it's not visible. You need an engineer to tell you, <laughs> guess what? Your foundation has been uh, damaged. It needs to be underpinned. And again, try to get insurance. And they'll say there's something called earth movement that they're not responsible for. It's like an act of God. So construction law is a very complicated matter in the uh, city of New York. Uh, and again, people don't know that. Uh, and they don't have the resources and they can't get insurance unless it's litigated. Okay, I agree with you, Ernest. Uh, let's go. Community forum, any non-committee members, non-board members? Mr. Nisi? 
Yes, I heard something. Who is this? Who's speaking? Rosaria Sinisi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's your name? Rosaria Sinisi. I spoke oh. earlier. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to follow up on what Esther and Ernest just said. Um, I'm an attorney, and with this business about earth movement insurance that a homeowner cannot get, that's absolutely true, but there's a corollary to that. Just getting yourself put on the developer's policy does not solve the problem because what's happening more and more over the last couple of years is that all these insurance companies who write developer policies are putting in more and more and more exclusions and they will exclude earth movement insurance. So even if you're added to their policy, it, it won't help you if their earth movement damages your foundation. And that's not the only exclusion. There are more and more being added all the time. And it takes a really experienced construction attorney who's been doing this for years and keeps up with the additional exclusions on a monthly basis to be able to protect their client. So if, if anybody says, you know, your homeowner's insurance will cover it, that's not the case. But a lot of people just do not have the education and the information at their fingertips to know this, and they learn it the hard way after their foundation shifts, and they're left with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of expenses that they can't pay to repair their own property, and nobody's liable. Well, the, I've, I used to work for the housing department, and the building code, which is separate from the housing department, is, as you know, Mr. huge, huge. And, oh, yeah. And, yeah. Construction is huge, so it's a, uh, it's a, it's a. But but, but this is a corollary to that. The build yeah. under the building code, the DOB is supposed to check to make yes. sure that that the insurance policies are correct. But all they do is they look at the face page of the policy, and if they think that the amount is okay, they don't look for exclusions. I've they heard of a, breakthrough. I've heard of a. Things happening over at DOB. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Well, that, let's just say representatives of DOB have said that in public meetings when they've been questioned. And actually, one of the, the liaisons said, Well, we rely on the good faith of the developer. And the entire room exploded in laughter. <laughs> I would just like to make an offer to the committee. If you can come up with some questions, I can reach out to the Department of Buildings. To come to a meeting, it will probably not be before the fall, based on the, uh, the the things that we have coming down the pipeline for the next couple of months. But I can do that. Thank you, Carolyn. That's a good suggestion. Yes, I, think I would because, be happy. Sorry. Yeah, that's because it's separate from housing matters. Just to make it clear, the building department stuff is very more technical and more detailed as to. What's going up and what you supposed what's supposed to be inside of a building. So, but yes, I think that's a very good thing, Caroline. Uh, I'll, Thank you. Yeah. Any Thank others you. from community? I just want to thank Caroline for putting up with us tonight. Yes. We were uh, quite a handful, Caroline, and a more and more than that. And you hung in there as you always do. I just need to thank you and applaud you. And I put my applause thing on the computer, but I you can't see it. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Uh, other business? There's no other business. We have a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the not everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your cooperation. Thank you. Happy St. Patrick's Thank you. Night. <laughs> yeah, St. Patty's. Yeah. St. Patrick's Night. <laughs>